Before we start the video, I asked you guys whether you wanted to see me cover the 2013 Kaichi Budokai or the Red Ribbon Army story next, and although the votes lean toward the Budokai, I've been hearing mixed reviews between the two. If you guys want to see the 2013 Kaichi Budokai covered next, let's get to 1500 likes in 24 hours and that'll be the next story we cover. Hello citizens, the great Saiyaman here, but before we get into how Goku went to great lengths to protect the earth, you need to protect your online privacy with today's sponsor. NordVPN. <laughs> Alright, I can't do the voice the entire time, but seriously guys, NordVPN serves as a virtual private network, offering a convenient one-click solution to bolster your online security. You can use the link in my description to access its features, including threat protection against malware and a dark web monitor that alerts you to credential leaks. NordVPN ensures your data is encrypted, rendering it unreadable to criminals, similar to how power levels were unreadable in Dragon Ball without scouters at one point. If you prefer not not to be confined to a single location, click the link in my pinned comment. NordVPN enables instant access to VPN servers in different regions, allowing you to bypass geographical restrictions and access geo-blocked content. For instance, I recently utilized Netflix Japan to check out One Piece, even though Dragon Ball is obviously better, as some episodes were unavailable in the US, making NordVPN a valuable tool. Threat protection and network security are extremely important. I think one of the coolest parts of about NordVPN though is just using one click to change your location to anywhere around the world and browse the internet without interruption. You can literally travel to other countries and watch your favorite content securely. It doesn't get any better than that. Download NordVPN today using the link in my description or pinned comment. That's nordvpn.com slash Justin's Den. By doing so, you'll receive an additional four months on a two year plan coupled with a 30 day money back guarantee. So power up your online defenses and navigate the internet with confidence of a Saiyan warrior in battle. And thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. The Saiyan saga takes place five years after the events of the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. A farmer is outside handling chores when suddenly a massive object plummets from the sky at a distance. Pondering whether it's a meteor or a UFO, the farmer leaps into his truck to investigate. To his surprise, he discovers a small space pod at the heart of a giant crater. The space pod begins to unfold and an individual emerges. Ascending from the crater onto the grass right before the farmer, the stranger expresses irritation towards someone named Kakarot for their still being inhabitants on planet Earth. Perplexed, the farmer wonders about the identity of this individual and a device on the alien's eye emits a beep. Mocking the farmer for having a meager battle power of only five, the alien is amused. The alien moves toward the farmer and in an attempt to defend himself, the farmer shoots his shotgun but the alien effortlessly catches the bullet and hurls it back, hitting the farmer and killing him. The eye device beeps again, prompting the alien to notice a substantial power in the distance, leading him to fly toward it, suspecting it might be Kakarot. At the same time, Piccolo stands menacingly over a mountainous region and suddenly senses a formidable force approaching, initially thinking it might be Son Goku. However, Piccolo surprised to notice the stranger instead. Displeased that he didn't find Kakarot, the alien and Piccolo exchange words with the alien checking his eye device, revealing Piccolo's battle power of 322. Despite Piccolo's objections, the alien confidently dismisses him as no match. In an angered response, Piccolo unleashes a devastating shockwave at the alien. However, when the smoke dissipates, the stranger remains unharmed, asserting that all Piccolo managed to do was create a show of dust. Piccolo stands in fear as the stranger readies himself to retaliate, but suddenly his eye device beeps again, detecting an even greater power power level further away. Convinced that it must be Kakarot this time, the alien departs, leaving Piccolo astonished and unable to comprehend the situation. As he flies away, the alien declares that Kakarot has lost sight of the pride of the strongest warriors in all the universe, the Saiyan race. At Kame House, Bulma cheerfully announces her arrival as she strolls in, showcasing her new, short, boyish haircut. Master Roshi, the turtle, and Krillin express their joy at her arrival, and Bulma reveals a special gift for Master 
past Oroshi. Playfully, he wonders if the gift involves filling her up, prompting Bulma to punch him. Meanwhile, Goku is soaring toward Kame House on the flying Nimbus. At the same time, Krillin inquires about Yamcha, and Bulma dismissively mentions him, exclaiming she doesn't care about him after what he did to her. She then changes topics and inquires about Launch, and Krillin informs her that she went off in pursuit of Tien five years ago. As Goku approaches Kame House, he communicates to someone on his lap where they are. Elsewhere, the alien remarks on Kakarot's swift movements. Back at Kame House, Goku dismounts the flying Nimbus while still holding someone in his hands and enthusiastically shouts to his friends in the house. Krillin recognizes Goku's voice, and nearby, the alien notes Kakarot's sudden stop and continues to pursue him. To everyone's surprise, Goku is holding a little boy in his arms. Bulma inquires about the child as she steps outside, and Krillin jokingly questions if Goku is taking up babysitting. However, Goku reveals that this little boy is his son. Everyone is taken aback as Goku places the child down. The boy is dressed in a stylish outfit with a hat adorned with the four-star ball. He politely greets everyone with a good afternoon, and Bulma reciprocates. Goku reveals the boy's name is Son Gohan, and Master Roshi notes that he's named after Goku's late grandfather. Bulma bends down to question Gohan on his age, and he replies that he's four years old. Surprised by Gohan's good manners, Bulma then notices he has a tail reminiscent of Goku's past. Concerned, the group asks if anything peculiar happens on the night of a full moon, but Goku explains that they go to bed pretty early around his house and wonders about their inquiry, but Master Roshi brushes it off. Krillin wonders if Gohan Gohan is as strong as Goku, but Goku mentions that Chi Chi disapproves of training him. Chi Chi believes that since there's peace in the world, martial arts have become obsolete and it's time for studying. Bulma then inquires about the Dragon Ball on Gohan's hat, and Goku explains that it's his grandpa's memento, the four star ball. He also mentions having the three star ball and the six star ball at his house. Their conversation is interrupted though, as suddenly Goku becomes serious as he senses a formidable power approaching. Everyone else is oblivious, but Goku states that it's it's nothing like he's ever felt before. The alien then lands at Kame House, much to everyone's surprise. He recognizes Kakarot as the spitting image of his father, and questions why Kakarot hasn't eradicated all humans on the planet yet as he was supposed to. Krillin, thinking the stranger is drunk, approaches him rudely, but Goku warns him not to get too close. Unfortunately though, it's too late, and the alien smacks Krillin with his tail, sending him through Kame House. Goku turns to the stranger in anger, but grows surprised surprised at the revelation of his tail wrapped around his waist like a belt. Goku panics about the tail, and the alien states that Kakarot has finally figured out who he is. However, Goku is confused, and the alien speculates that Kakarot must have suffered a severe head injury. Goku insists he's son Goku, and not whoever this Kakarot is, and the alien demands a straightforward answer about whether he was hit on the head or not. Goku vaguely recalls a head injury from his childhood, noting the scar, and Master Roshi mentions his conversation with Goku's grandfather, stating that long ago, son Gohan found a baby with a tail and a violent personality. He explains that one day, Gohan accidentally dropped the baby in a valley, causing a severe head injury. The baby nearly died, but miraculously survived. Subsequently, the violent personality disappeared, and the baby became an obedient, well-behaved boy. Goku realizes that he's that baby, leaving Bulma puzzled about the alien's connection to Goku. The stranger now now realizes Kakarot has forgotten everything and vows to find a way to resurface Goku's memories. As Krillin stands up and warns Goku about the stranger's strength, the stranger begins to explain that he and Kakarot are the same, as Kakarot is no earthling but a Saiyan warrior, a member of the most powerful race in the universe. The stranger then declares himself as Raditz, Goku's older brother. This revelation surprises everyone, and Goku finds the notion absurd. Krillin then questions why Goku would be on Earth Earth if he's an alien. Raditz then simplifies the situation, stating that Kakarot was sent to Earth to eliminate the humans obstructing the Saiyans' planetary conquest. He states that Saiyans locate hospitable planets and sell them to other species, but in order to do so, all inhabitants must be wiped out first. He goes on to state that while adults are dispatched to planets with high-powered inhabitants, babies like Kakarot are sent to the weaker planets like Earth, where they can grow stronger under the influence of the planet's full moon. Goku inquires about the moon, and Raditz explains a Saiyan's ability to transform into a great ape by looking at the full moon. Master Roshi, Bulma, and Krillin recall Goku's transformation in the past, but Goku remains unaware of what the great ape is. Suddenly, Raditz notices Goku's tail is missing and questions what 
happened to it, and Goku clarifies that it was cut off some time ago. An enraged Raditz disassociates both himself and his brother from the humans, but Goku emphasizes that he doesn't care if they're related, or if he's an alien. Goku rejects Raditz's idea of him, and confidently tells him to leave Earth, prompting Raditz to state he can't do that, and reveal that there are only a few Saiyans left in the universe. Unfortunately, their home planet was destroyed in a meteor collision, wiping out most Saiyans, including their parents, but Goku remains unfazed. Raditz explains that there are only four Saiyans left, including himself and Goku, and implores Goku to join them, as there's a planet they need to conquer, and Goku's aid is the last piece of the puzzle they need to dominate it. He then cites the thrill of battle and attempts to appeal to Goku's Saiyan instincts, but Goku remains steadfast in his refusal to join him, stating he'd rather die than slaughter innocent people. Determined, Raditz changes tactics and points out Gohan, wondering if taking Kakarot's son will convince him to cooperate. Goku warns Raditz to stay away, but in an instant, Raditz strikes Goku in the stomach, incapacitating him, and seizes Gohan. As Gohan cries, Raditz informs his brother that he has only one day to reconsider his offer. However, he states that should Goku decide to join the Saiyans, they'll need proof of his good intentions. Raditz then tells Goku that to prove himself, he must present him with the corpses of 100 Earthlings on the very island they stand on, otherwise he'll kill Gohan. Raditz reiterates his demand for Goku to eliminate 100 Earthlings, as Goku, barely able to move, listens to Raditz deem Earth the next target of the Saiyans after they finish their business on another remote planet. Raditz states that he and his two friends could wipe out Earth's population in a little less than a month, so Kakarot taking a few human lives should be nothing. Weakly, Goku pleads for Raditz to release his child, and unnoticed by everyone, Piccolo watches from the rear of the house, seething with anger. Raditz begins to take off, but not before warning his brother not to fight him, as he'd surely be defeated, leaving Gohan crying for his father on the beach, while Goku lies incapacitated. Raditz leaves, and cursing the predicament, Goku summons the flying Nimbus. However, Krillin and Master Roshi object questioning his chances of victory. The group take a minute to compose themselves, and Krillin questions what their next move will be, noting the strength of Goku's brother is unlike anything they've ever seen. Goku, rising to his feet, identifies Raditz's tail as his weak point, and says that if he can somehow manage to grab it, he can defeat him. Master Roshi concurs, and notes that Goku used to have the same weakness, but Goku acknowledges that he can't fight Raditz alone. Although Krillin and Master Roshi volunteer to fight, confident that the Dragon Balls can bring them back to life if they're killed. Goku tells them he learned Shinron can't grant the same wish twice, meaning if they die again, there's no coming back. Goku questions if they'll still help though, and they agree, although Krillin remains skeptical of his chances of survival. Bulma suggests using the Dragon Balls to eliminate Raditz and save the world, but Master Roshi doubts they can gather them all before the Saiyan returns. Goku then questions Bulma on if she has the Dragon Radar. As she retrieves it, Bulma notices Raditz's incredible speed, and everyone knows notices him stop, relieved that he hasn't returned to outer space. As the group prepare to depart, they're told that they don't stand a chance as Piccolo reveals himself. Goku questions Piccolo's presence, and Bulma moves away in horror. Piccolo explains he's already encountered Raditz once before, and states that Krillin and Master Roshi won't be any help in the fight. The solution he proposes is a team-up between himself and Goku, confident that if they fight together, they might be able to overpower Raditz. Goku, skeptical of Piccolo's change of heart, learns that Raditz obstructs Piccolo's plans for world domination. However, Piccolo states that once Raditz is gone, he'll be coming for Goku next. Reluctantly, the two agree to collaborate for now, and Goku grabs the dragon radar from Bulma, then boards the flying Nimbus and inquires if Piccolo can keep up. Together, they speed off, leaving Master Roshi optimistic about their chances. He tells Bulma to recall the radar's location so they can follow suit, determined to witness the battle for themselves. Goku and Piccolo continue continue their approach toward Gohan and Raditz, adjusting their direction to the right. Meanwhile at the crater, Raditz becomes irritated by Gohan's crying and decides to lock the child up in his space pod before going to search for food. However, his eye device beeps, detecting a battle power of 710 nearby, precisely from his own pod. Raditz refuses to believe that a young child possesses such strength, suspecting his device is malfunctioning. At the same time, Goku tells Piccolo that they're close and suggests that they descend slowly to sneak up on Raditz, but Piccolo reveals it won't make a difference, as Raditz knows they're coming thanks to the device on his ear, capable of sensing a target's position and strength.
strength. Opting for a different approach, Goku decides they have no choice but to attack his brother head on. Meanwhile, Raditz's device once again registers a 710 reading, leading him to believe it's definitely broken. However, readings from another direction emerge, with two distinct values of 322 and 334. One of them matches Kakarot's battle power, and confused, as he states there's no way Kakarot would try to challenge him, Raditz once again concludes that his device must be broken. Suddenly, Raditz spots Goku and Piccolo flying in, confirming that his eye device wasn't malfunctioning after all, and Gohan indeed possesses a battle power of 710. Goku and Piccolo touch down, and Raditz questions why his brother has shown up, to which Goku demands the return of his son. Raditz questions Goku's intent to refuse his Saiyan heritage and oppose his older brother, and Goku confirms, exclaiming he has no brother. Growing impatient with the conversation, Piccolo discards his turban and mantle, revealing that he too has trained with weighted clothing. Relieved to shed the extra weight, Piccolo's battle power is now at 408, and Goku follows suit by removing his weighted clothing as well, elevating his battle power to 416. Raditz then laughs, dismissing their power as inconsequential, and states that the two don't know their place. Goku declares that strength isn't all that's necessary to win a fight, and having heard enough, Raditz exclaims that he doesn't need Kakarot after all, as he's a disgrace to the Saiyan race and will die. Goku and Piccolo brace themselves for battle as Raditz charges at them. In an instant, he appears behind them and delivers a swift elbow to their backs. Shocked by Raditz's speed, Goku and Piccolo wonder how he did it, and Raditz states their mediocre defenses will only keep them alive for a few minutes. As Goku and Piccolo contemplate their next moves, Raditz decides to share a piece of information before their demise. He states that the two other surviving Saiyans possess battle powers much greater than his own. Piccolo and Goku contemplate the formidable strength of the Saiyans, and as Piccolo states Goku must be excited, Goku denies this, stating that this time he's a little nervous. Opting to deal with it later though, he inquires about his son's whereabouts. Goku learns from Raditz that Gohan is confined in the crater behind him, as he wouldn't stop crying. Goku ascends, peers into the crater, and assures Gohan that he'll rescue him. Raditz however laughs, predicting that Goku won't get the chance, as he'll be dead soon. Subsequently, Goku and Piccolo charge in and engage Raditz in a series of rapid strikes. Despite their efforts, Raditz evades and counters with a powerful back kick, thwarting their advance, and takes flight. Goku and Piccolo ascend into the sky, but Raditz suddenly unleashes a dual energy blast down at the two, which Goku manages to avoid, but Piccolo, however, suffers an injury to his left arm. As explosions ensue on both sides of the blast, Goku stands, and Raditz seizes the opportunity to launch a surprise attack from behind, propelling Goku through the air. Weakly, Goku rises and suddenly shows concern for Piccolo as he observes the severe damage to Piccolo's left arm. Undeterred, Piccolo states he can still fight, prompting uncontrollable laughter from Raditz. In the midst of this, Piccolo inquires if Goku has some sort of new trick up his sleeve, but Goku denies this, stating he's all out. Piccolo then says he has no choice and begins to tell Goku about something new he's been developing. Mocking their attempts at devising a plan, Raditz laughs while Goku questions Piccolo about the feasibility of his new technique, especially with just one arm. Piccolo reassures Goku that it'll work, but emphasizes the need for Goku to keep Raditz occupied while he accumulates enough ki for the technique. Piccolo then tells Goku he was planning to use the technique to kill him, prompting laughter between the two, confusing Raditz. Goku tells Piccolo to do his best and charges in, and simultaneously, Piccolo announces his special beam cannon, while Goku engages Raditz with punches. Piccolo continues charging his attack, while Raditz turns the tables, landing several hits on Goku before kicking him into the distance. Goku, however, regains control, ascends into the air, and prepares a Kamehameha. Raditz panics as his eye device indicates Goku's rising battle power of 924, and realizes Goku can somehow focus and increase his battle power deliberately. Meanwhile, Piccolo's power level is caught on the Saiyan's device as well, as it's escalated as high as 1030 and rising, leaving Raditz astounded. At the same time, Goku fires the Kamehameha, narrowly dodged by Raditz, who attempts to escape but is pursued by the redirected blast. Raditz, however, prepares to take the blast head-on and manages to stop it with his hands, surviving the attack. 
To Goku's disbelief, Raditz remains unharmed, and the Saiyan retaliates, sending a shockwave at the battered Goku, who falls to the ground with tattered clothing. As Raditz rushes in and prepares to strike the vulnerable Goku, Piccolo completes his key charge. Raditz is taken aback as his eye device reads a power level of 1330, realizing that Goku and Piccolo possess remarkable control over their power, and before Raditz can react, Piccolo unleashes his special beam cannon directly at the Saiyan. As the blast hurls toward Raditz, a bright flash of light ensues amongst the combatants. However, Raditz somehow managed to survive the attack as he dodged at the last minute, leaving Piccolo astonished as he only managed to graze the Saiyan's shoulder. Raditz states that had the attack actually hit him head on, he wouldn't have survived, and Piccolo fears the worst as Raditz, though irritated by the minor injury, prepares to unleash a counterattack. Raditz bids Piccolo a farewell, but suddenly he's halted by pain as Goku's grabbed his tail, taking him by surprise. Goku tightens his grip, forcing Raditz to the ground. Goku tells Piccolo to use the technique again, and Piccolo seizes the opportunity and instructs Goku to hold on while he prepares another special beam cannon. Raditz, in desperation, pleads with Goku not to kill him. Despite Goku's initial dismissive response, Raditz claims to have had a change of heart, expressing a desire to quietly depart from the planet. Piccolo urges Goku to ignore Raditz's pleas, but Raditz continues to implore Goku to believe him, despite Piccolo's repeated warnings. Reluctantly, Goku releases Raditz, who seizes the opportunity to elbow Goku in the face, sending him flying backward. Hovering over Goku, Raditz steps on his chest, asserting that Goku is too soft to be a Saiyan and disassociates himself with him, stating that he has no issues with killing anyone, even his younger brother. With his foot pressed firmly on Goku's chest, Raditz declares that death is imminent, prompting screams of pain from Goku. Raditz goads Piccolo to attack him again, stating that he'll be dead soon as well, and Piccolo contemplates the likelihood of Raditz evading another special beam cannon. As all hope seems lost, suddenly, the eye device alerts Raditz as Gohan violently emerges from Raditz's space pod, destroying it in the process. Much to everyone's surprise, Gohan lands visibly enraged, tears streaming down his face. Goku urgently instructs him to flee, while Raditz panics as his eye device registers a power level of 1307 from the young enraged boy. Violently, Gohan yells for the man to stop hurting his dad as he launches himself at Raditz, forcefully headbutting him in the chest and cracking his armor. Gohan lands and reverts to his normal state, leaving Raditz staggered. Goku expresses surprise, and Gohan approaches him as Goku once again implores his son to escape. As Raditz slowly regains his composure, he dismissively remarks that Gohan's battle power has dropped to one and proceeds to smack him away, knocking him out. As Raditz prepares to deal the finishing blow to Gohan, Goku pleads with him to stop. However, ignoring Goku's pleas, Raditz continues on, stating that Gohan has much more power than Goku, but it's a shame he won't learn to use it. As the Saiyan draws closer to finishing the job, Goku seizes the opportunity, leaping up and positioning himself behind Raditz, trapping him in a full Nelson hold. As Raditz wonders how Goku can still move, Goku urges Piccolo to use his special technique again. Piccolo begins to charge his key once more, asking why Goku didn't grab Raditz's tail again, but Goku states that Raditz could cut it off if he needed to, eliciting shock from the villain, surprised that his brother knew about this. Raditz attempts to break free, but finds it difficult due to Gohan's earlier attack. He warns Goku that if he doesn't let go, they'll both be killed, but Goku seems to be unconcerned about the consequences, giving this is the only way to stop Raditz. As his attack nears completion, Piccolo states that he'll gladly take Goku's life along with Raditz, as killing him would be a bonus. Goku urges Piccolo to hurry once more, and Raditz attempts to reason with Goku, promising to leave and change his ways, but Goku remains steadfast, no longer falling for his brother's deception. With determination, Piccolo smugly apologizes for the wait, as Goku yells for him to unleash his attack as he declares the special beam cannon and unleashes the technique, piercing through both Raditz and Goku. The powerful blast pierces through Raditz's chest, emerging from Goku's back, and both warriors plummet to the ground with severe, bloody wounds in their chests. Raditz is in awe that he managed to be killed on such a weak planet, but laughs at the thought of his brother sacrificing his own life. However, he learns from Piccolo that Goku won't be dead for long, as he can be revived using the 
Dragon Balls. Raditz curses his brother, but laughs, revealing that everything that transpired today has been broadcasted to his other Saiyan comrades in space. He predicts their arrival soon, anticipating the devastation they'll bring. Struggling through their injuries, Goku queries the time until their arrival, and Raditz grimly replies one year, surprising Piccolo. Raditz then brags, stating that this is Earth's last year for survival, and Piccolo, frustrated with Raditz's ominous ramblings, decides to end his life. At the same time, aboard a flying plane, Master Roshi, Bulma, and Krillin spot Piccolo standing alone. Puzzled, they wonder about the events unfolding below. Meanwhile, in the depths of space on a remote planet, a bald, mustached alien with an eye device confirms that Raditz is dead. Another alien, smaller with wild hair and a similar eye device, states that Raditz was pathetic to have been killed by fighters with power levels less than 10,000. However, he muses over the Dragon Ball's wish-granting abilities. The larger alien suggests reviving Raditz, but the smaller one deems it a waste and expresses a desire for eternal life, an idea that the larger alien concurs with. Both aliens take off from the planet into space pods resembling Raditz's, discussing Kakarot's child's remarkable high battle power, speculating that the mix of both Saiyan and Earthling blood produces a powerful hybrid. The larger alien hints at the concept of a Super Saiyan and contemplates breeding with Earthlings to re-establish a stronger Saiyan empire. However, the smaller alien argues that the children would likely be too strong for their own good, and opts to sticking to the original plan of wiping out all life on Earth. Back on Earth, Piccolo recounts the events to Krillin and Master Roshi, while Bulma tends to Gohan. Relieved, Goku jokes about dying as Krillin tells him they'll wish him back, and Goku peacefully passes away as his body mysteriously disappears. Piccolo suspects Kami must have intervened, and believes that the deity has a plan for Goku. At the same time, the two remaining Saiyans decide to enter hibernation for their lengthy journey to Earth. Bulma inquires about Goku's body being taken by Kami, and Master Roshi expresses relief that it was Kami who intervened. Krillin notices Gohan's four-star ball hat and suggests gathering the other Dragon Balls to revive Goku before the Saiyans arrive. Bulma, growing irritated, wonders about Yamcha's whereabouts and is reminded of how Goku's older brother knew their location. Piccolo explains that the strange device on Raditz's face allowed him to detect their strength and location, and Bulma, approaching Raditz, instructs Krillin to retrieve the device. After putting it on, Bulma notes that the technology is incredible and states that although it's a bit damaged, she should be able to fix it and use it to locate Yamcha and Tien. Roshi suggests returning to Kame House, and Krillin plans to search for the Dragon Balls afterward. Roshi queries Piccolo's plans, but stops mid-sentence as he witnesses Piccolo regenerating his missing arm, shocking everyone. Piccolo instructs the group to search for the Dragon Balls while Kami deals with Goku, and decides to take Goku's son with him. Krillin assumes that Piccolo intends to eat Gohan, but Piccolo clarifies that Gohan has untapped fighting potential, and he wants to harness it before the other Saiyans arrive. Concerned about what Chi-Chi might think, Master Roshi suggests informing her first, but Piccolo insists there's no time and threatens to kill anyone who stands in his way. As he carries Gohan in his arms, Piccolo promises to return the boy after a year, but not a moment before, and takes off, as Krillin fears the impending scolding from Goku and Chi-Chi. Meanwhile, in the afterlife, a grand station with houses in the clouds features a path leading to a large building. Souls walk down the path, directed by a guide to face judgment. Inside, Kami and Goku, now with a halo, approaches a massive desk where King Yema sits. Kami requests Goku to receive training from someone named King Kai, and King Yema, after reviewing Goku's achievements, questions his choice to traverse what's known as Snake Way to get to King Kai instead of going to heaven. In the midst of this discussion, Goku wonders if aliens also arrive here when they die, and Kami explains that everyone in the universe comes for judgment before King Yema. Goku then inquires about Raditz, and Yema reveals that he saw him and sent him straight to hell. Goku questions if Raditz put up a fight, and Yema confirms, but states that he overpowered him. Goku expresses admiration and wonders if he should be trained by Yema instead, leading Kami to disclose that King Kai is stronger than King Yema. Yema overhears this and threatens to send Kami to hell in the future, but Kami nervously tries to play it off. Goku receives approval to train with King Kai, and Yema points him in the direction to begin his journey through Snake Way. However, he tells Goku not to come crying to him if he falls off Snake Way on his way to his destination. Goku takes off, expressing gratitude, and Kami 
reflects on the impending danger to Earth, thinking that while Goku's gone, the Earth's only hope is Gohan, but wonders how he'll turn out, as there's no telling how Piccolo will raise him for the next year. However, his thoughts are interrupted as King Yemma screams at him to leave, as his murmuring was getting annoying. Meanwhile, a guide meets with Goku and takes him to the beginning of Snake Way, where Goku learns he must traverse a 1 million kilometer long road to reach King Kai. Shocked, Goku wonders if anyone has ever reached the end, and the guide explains that King Yemma managed to do so in the past 100 million years. The guide then warns Goku about falling through the clouds, as if he does, he'll fall into hell and never escape. Goku acknowledges this and wishes he brought a lunch, but is informed that he doesn't need food as he's dead. Goku then questions the guide on if he knows fortune teller Baba, and when he confirms, Goku tells him to ask her if she can tell Master Roshi not to bring him back to life for one year. With that, Goku sets off using his energy to fly, and meanwhile, Roshi contemplates breaking the news of Goku and Gohan to Chi Chi and makes Krillin do it, expecting her disapproval. At the same time, Goku, having used up all his energy flying, opts to run along Snake Way. Piccolo leads Gohan to a shallow lake and urges him to wake up, as he's been unconscious since Raditz knocked him out. In a rather abrupt manner, Piccolo drops Gohan into the water to jolt him awake, and when the boy does so, he wonders what's going on. Announcing they need to talk, Gohan turns and notices Piccolo, and Piccolo is met with Gohan's fear, who starts crying and desperately calling for his father. Already irritated, Piccolo yells that there's no time for this, and grabs Gohan from the water. The boy continues to cry, and Piccolo sternly commands him to be silent or he'll break his neck, and Gohan complies. Piccolo then explains to Gohan that his father was killed protecting him, and as Gohan breaks into tears, Piccolo yells at him to stop. Piccolo goes on to state that Goku's friends will use the Dragon Balls to revive him next year, but a more significant problem looms. Two even more formidable adversaries are set to attack Earth, so they don't have much time. Even with Goku's return, Piccolo says that their combined efforts won't be enough to thwart the impending threat alone, so they'll need Gohan's help. Piccolo declares his intention to train Gohan to defend the Earth, despite Gohan's protest that he doesn't know how to fight at all. Piccolo insists Gohan possesses latent power, and he intends to bring it to the surface. Gohan continues to deny this, calling Piccolo a liar, so Piccolo decides to prove him wrong. To demonstrate, Piccolo grabs Gohan's head and hurls him at a nearby mountain. Initially frightened, with Piccolo privately hoping for the boy's powers to show itself, Gohan becomes enraged mid-flight, unleashing a powerful blast that obliterates the mountain, resulting in a massive explosion. When the smoke dissipates, Gohan sits in front of a large crater he created, and Piccolo himself is astonished, thinking that Gohan's power is even greater than he imagined. Piccolo then thinks to himself that he's about to train a boy who could very well be his greatest adversary in the future. Amazed by his own feat, Gohan learns from Piccolo about his hidden power emerging in moments of high emotion. However, Piccolo emphasizes that such power alone won't suffice in battles. Although Gohan expresses a desire to become a scholar rather than a martial artist, Piccolo asserts that defeating the two Saiyans threatening Earth takes precedence. Terrified, Gohan confesses his fear, prompting Piccolo to threaten him once more. Urgently, Piccolo decides they'll commence training immediately and instructs Gohan to remove his jacket. Gohan, wishing to train under his resurrected father, faces Piccolo's mockery and insults aimed at Goku as he states he's not suited to be an effective teacher. Teacher. Unbeknownst to them, Goku continues his journey along Snake Way. Concerned about the upcoming training, Gohan questions what he should do, and Piccolo reassures him nothing difficult, stating that the initial phase will be survival training. He intends to leave Gohan alone in the wilderness for six months before delving into combat training, deeming it necessary to see what he's capable of. Gohan panics, fearing solitude, but Piccolo informs him that bloodthirsty beasts will be his companions, emphasizing that this experience will toughen him both physically and mentally. Reminding Gohan that the fate of the world rests in his hands, Piccolo advises him to believe in his own power and its effectiveness. After bidding a farewell, Piccolo advises Gohan not to think about running away, asserting that this is a preferable situation compared to the surrounding area. Overwhelmed, Gohan panics, wondering what he'll do about food, a bath, or a bed, but Piccolo laughs off his concerns, stating that he'll find none of those prepared for him out here. Gohan perceives Piccolo as cruel, to which Piccolo responds that cruelty is their shared fate, as he flies off, leaving a scared Gohan crying in fear. Meanwhile, Kami watches the unfolding events from the lookout, contemplating the change in Piccolo's demeanor and heart, and Mr. Popo acknowledges
acknowledges that the old Demon King Piccolo wouldn't have trained Son Goku's son, no matter the circumstance. Kami then reveals that after Piccolo killed Raditz, his soul went to the afterlife, which poses an anomaly, as those killed by the Demon Tribe usually cannot move on, as their souls remain trapped, drifting between heaven and earth. Kami deduces that this fact proves Piccolo is changed from the previous Demon King, but speculates that perhaps Piccolo realizes he and Kami may die when the Saiyans arrive in one year. Kami goes on to state that he and Piccolo's life are one and the same, and asserts that his counterpart may be trying to leave behind a legacy, even if it involves Son Goku's son. Mr. Popo brings up the Dragon Balls, and Kami indicates that their next use will be their final one. Meanwhile, alone in the wilderness, Gohan faces his fears, crying and feeling trapped. Suddenly, a large dinosaur appears, causing Gohan to run away screaming, begging for anyone to help him. Gohan trips and narrowly avoids being eaten as he unknowingly uses his powers to leap high above the dinosaur onto a nearby mountaintop. At the top, confused on how he got there, Gohan spends the day crying until nightfall where he continues to sob, believing he's going to die. However, spotting a few apples, he considers himself lucky but wonders how they got there as there are no trees nearby. Regardless, Gohan eagerly consumes them only to find them sour. Dissatisfied, Gohan longs for a decent meal, angering Piccolo who observes from a distance, responsible for placing the apples in front of the boy. As Gohan falls asleep, Piccolo asserts that this will be the last time he'll help him and says that if he can't survive on his own after this, he was wrong about him and his power. Meanwhile, Goku continues his journey along Snake Way, complaining about his hunger. Under the full moon's glow, Gohan rests atop the mountain while Piccolo, seated cross-legged, hovers in mid-air, also in slumber. Gohan wakes up and catches Piccolo's attention, contemplating the challenge of descending from the mountain and finding something to eat. As the boy begins to cry, he momentarily stops and marvels at the unusually bright night. Curiosity leads him to gaze at the full moon for the first time, and suddenly, Gohan goes silent, his heart pounding louder as his gaze intensifies. Piccolo floats nearby in confusion, and Gohan's gaze triggers a transformation reminiscent of Goku's past. Transformed into the Great Ape, Gohan, too large for the mountain, tumbles to the ground, much to the shock of Piccolo. Witnessing Gohan's destructive rampage and colossal mouth blast, Piccolo panics, fearing the Earth's destruction before the Saiyan's arrival. Recalling Raditz's warning about full moon transformations, Piccolo resolves to eliminate the moon. Gohan reverts to his normal state, falling asleep naked on the ground. Descending near the unconscious boy, Piccolo reflects on the Saiyan's strength and realizes the importance of their tails in their transformations. Deciding to remove Gohan's tail in an attempt to prevent this from happening again, Piccolo decides to help Gohan one last time, crafting a sword and an outfit for the boy, resembling Goku's. However, the Turtle Hermit is replaced with the Demon logo. Planning to provide Gohan with special hell training in six months, Piccolo aims to transform him into a member of the Demon Tribe. With these thoughts, Piccolo departs, leaving Gohan to sleep peacefully, mirroring Goku's restful slumber along Snake Way. The next day, zooming over the ocean in an air car, Chi-Chi and the Ox King are en route to Kame House. Chi-Chi, infuriated about Gohan's overnight absence and neglect of studies, vents her frustration while the Ox King attempts to pacify her. At Kame House, Boma, in her bathrobe, has spent the night working with Raditz's eye device, finally achieving a beeping response. She jumps up excited, ready to share the news with everyone, but witnesses Master Roshi, Krillin, and the turtle sleeping. In response, she uses a machine gun to wake them up, scolding them for sleeping while she worked. Testing the device's functionality, Boma first measures Master Roshi's battle power and reads 139. Krillin steps up next, eager to hear what his battle power is, and learns he has a rating of 206, surpassing Master Roshi. Boma states that the device can find powerful people all over the world, and detects powerful forces at varying distances. A 250 is revealed to be Tien, and 177 is revealed to be Yamcha. Piccolo is also identified on the device with a battle power of 329, and Bulma deduces Gohan must be with him as well. As Krillin contemplates going to save Gohan from Piccolo, Master Roshi advises against it, surmising that Piccolo must have a bigger plan for Gohan to save the Earth, and notes that even if they wanted to help, they wouldn't be able to defeat Piccolo. Bulma then suggests using the device's information to rally support for gathering the Dragon Balls and reviving Goku. Suddenly, Yajirobe appears, delivering a message from Korin that he's aware of the situation with the Saiyans and wants Yamcha, Tien, Krillin, Shoutsu, and even Yajirobe to meet him at once. 
Krillin wonders why, and Yajirobe explains that Kami will be training them for the next six months. Departing, Yajirobe then informs the group not to revive Goku until the Saiyans show up, as he's training in the afterlife and needs more time. He explains that fortune teller Baba will be arriving soon, and that they should talk to her if they have any questions. With that, Yajirobe departs, leaving the group in astonishment. Soon after, another air car approaches, and the group is surprised to see Chi-Chi aboard with the Ox King. The Ox King bows before Master Roshi, and Chi-Chi demands to know Goku and Gohan's whereabouts. After a hesitant pause, Master Roshi reveals that Gohan was taken by the Demon King Piccolo. The Ox King wonders where Goku was during all of this, and Master Roshi reveals that Goku is dead, leading Chi-Chi to faint. Six months pass by, and Yamcha, Tien, Shao Tzu, Krillin, and Yajirobe undergo rigorous training with Kami. Meanwhile, Goku continues his journey toward King Kai, and Gohan, having survived and grown stronger, impresses Piccolo with his progress. The dinosaur from earlier reappears, but Gohan effortlessly evades it, showcasing his enhanced abilities. As the dinosaur lies incapacitated, Gohan skillfully cuts a slice of meat from the creature's tail, lights a fire with his key, and roasts the meat with his sword, earning Piccolo's acknowledgement from a distance. Their next phase of training begins, as Gohan launches a kick at Piccolo, but Piccolo effortlessly blocks it with his hand. Undeterred, Gohan attempts a punch, but Piccolo dodges and counterattacks with a kick from behind, telling Gohan not to lose sight of his target. Gohan admits he couldn't see Piccolo's moves, and Piccolo advises him to feel where his opponent is rather than look. Gohan brushes off the dust and complains, prompting Piccolo to zap him with eye lasers, exclaiming if he has time to complain, he has time to react, and emphasizes their limited window of six months. Piccolo urges Gohan to focus solely on training, emphasizing that improvement is crucial for facing the impending threat of the Saiyans. Meanwhile, Goku, exhausted after six months of traveling, finally reaches the end of Snake Way, leading to King Kai's place. As Goku leaps from the road and reaches the Kai's planet, he notices a small house and assumes this is the place, but is abruptly pulled onto the planet's surface, experiencing its heavy gravity. As Goku struggles to stand, he suddenly sees a monkey who he assumes is King Kai. Goku greets him and the monkey walks around chanting, so the Saiyan assumes this must be part of the rigorous training. As Goku attempts to mimic the monkey's strange movements, an unfamiliar figure in a fancy outfit intervenes as an awkward silence falls between them. Goku inquires who this person is, and he jokingly introduces himself as King Kai with the monkey named Bubbles. The Kai reverts back to his previous joke, but Goku is unaware of what he means. King Kai takes another crack at telling a joke for Goku to laugh at, but Goku still doesn't understand, prompting silence from King Kai. The Kai wonders why Goku is on his planet, and Goku inquires about martial arts training. However, the Kai insists that he could never train someone who doesn't understand comedy, prompting Goku to fake laugh so they could get started. Goku questions once more if King Kai will train him, and the Kai says he'd be willing to, but insists that Goku must pass the test first in telling a joke that can make him laugh. Goku panics, but manages to blurt out a joke about a futon flying away. Surprisingly, King Kai chuckles, deeming Goku's joke successful. Now prepared to teach Goku martial arts, King Kai tells the Saiyan to try attacking him so he can gauge his strength, but Goku states he can barely move. The Kai then reveals the planet's intense gravity, making Goku's body 10 times heavier than on Earth. He tells Goku to jump as high as he can, and as Goku continues struggling with the gravity, King Kai anticipates an entertaining training session. The Kai announces the commencement of training and inquires about Son Goku's intended duration. Goku, uncertain of the time spent on Snake Way, reveals his urgency due to the imminent arrival of the two Saiyans on Earth. King Kai, demonstrating his ability to determine the Saiyans' arrival time, states it should take 158 days for them to arrive, but assures Goku that the period is sufficient, as training on his planet is equivalent to thousands of years on Earth. Acknowledging the Saiyans' formidable strength and stating that their power is even stronger than his own, King Kai suggests that surpassing him is crucial for Goku's success. The training begins as the Kai tells Goku to chase and catch bubbles in order to overcome the planet's gravity. Goku takes off, but struggles to move, prompting him to remove his weighted clothing to increase his speed. As Goku draws closer to catching bubbles, the monkey speeds up, leaving Goku in astonishment. As the Saiyan questions his ability to catch bubbles, King Kai tells him to go home, but Goku wonders if he can get something to eat to restore his energy. After eating a large portion of the Kai's food, Goku gets back to training, but not before King Kai tells him to put his weighted clothing back 
back on to make his pursuit of Bubbles more effective. Goku asserts that he won't stand a chance with his weighted clothing on, but the Kai lets him in on his secret, stating that the world the Saiyans are from had about the same amount of gravity as the planet they're standing on. King Kai goes on to say that the Saiyans are born with an innate ability to fight, which makes them incredibly deadly, but Goku asserts that he's a Saiyan too, prompting confusion from King Kai. As night falls on Earth, Gohan, battered and bruised, gets acknowledgement from Piccolo as he states he's not such a crybaby anymore. Gohan then questions Piccolo on his relationship with his father, and Piccolo reveals that their fight isn't over, and after dealing with the Saiyans, Goku is next. Gohan mentions Goku's positive remarks about Piccolo, saying he's not as bad as he used to be after his previous iteration died, but Piccolo dismisses it in anger and demands Gohan to sleep. 40 days later, Goku achieves the milestone of catching Bubbles, impressing King Kai. The Kai then excitedly anticipates that with 118 days left to train, Goku may be able to master the Kaioken, a move that he himself hasn't been able to perfect. Meanwhile at Kami's lookout, the remaining Z fighters are deemed to have surpassed Kami, and with the future now in their hands, are instructed to set off to continue refining their skills. Piccolo continues Gohan's training, and King Kai focuses on Goku, as a decisive battle looms on the horizon. The Saiyan space pods continue their journey toward Earth, as everyone persists in their training. Goku, with his hands raised, charges energy for a technique, and King Kai challenges him to track the super speed of a massive brick he throws. The Kai unleashes the object at super speed and amps it up more, and Goku skillfully launches his blast and detonates the brick with ease. Impressed, King Kai marvels at Goku's ability to learn the technique known as the Spirit Bomb in such a short amount of time. The Kai then goes on to explain the nature of the Spirit Bomb, stating that it allows you to borrow energy from all surrounding life, concentrate it into a single point, and release it at will. He says that with the Earth being larger than his own planet, Goku could draw a tremendous amount of power from it, enough to even destroy it if he's not careful. However, the Kai says that the Spirit Bomb should only be used as a last resort and Goku agrees, stating that he'll have to make use of the Kaioken technique. As the two continue to converse, King Kai suddenly shouts in disbelief, realizing that he miscalculated Goku's return time down Snake Way, causing concern about the Saiyan's imminent arrival in just one day. Goku worries about the six month delay, but King Kai assures him it will only take two days to get back to Earth in his current state. Panicked, the Kai urges Goku to instruct his friends to revive him with the Dragon Balls, as the Saiyan places his hand on the Kai's back to contact them. Goku contacts Master Roshi, who wonders where the voice is coming from, but soon realizes that Goku is speaking to him from the afterlife. Goku explains the situation, stating that the Saiyans will be arriving on Earth tomorrow, and that he'll be a little late given the time he'll need to traverse Snake Way once more. Goku urges Roshi to summon Shinron immediately, and the old man rushes out of the bathroom, alerting Bulma and the others. In the afterlife, Goku prepares to depart, and King Kai mends his clothes. Goku, pleased to retain the turtle mark, jokes about the Kai's outfit, unaware of the Kai's logo that's now placed on his back. On Earth, Shenron emerges, offering one wish. Oolong suggests using the wish to get rid of the Saiyans, but Shenron, having been created by Kami, states he cannot exceed Kami's power. Master Roshi then wishes for Goku's revival, and Shenron easily grants it. Meanwhile, Gohan and Piccolo notice the sudden darkening of the sky, and Piccolo notes that the Saiyans are likely a arriving sooner than expected. On the Kai's planet, Goku is revived and thanks King Kai before departing, but not before being told that he won't be able to come back to life again if he dies. Goku descends to Snake Way, and King Kai ponders Goku's unfathomable strength, saying he never thought someone like him existed in the lower realm. Rushing along Snake Way, Goku, flying at super speed, prepares for the Saiyan's arrival, and the next day at 11.33 AM, the Saiyan space pods crash into a city making their stormy entrance on Earth. A gathering of onlookers surrounds the two craters in the middle of the street, puzzled about the recent events. The emergence of a figure, the smaller of the two Saiyans, induces panic amongst the crowd. Piccolo, Gohan, Yamcha, Krillin, Yajirobe, Tien, and Chaozu all sense the arrival of the Saiyans, Tien noting they arrived much sooner than expected. Both Saiyans exit their ships, causing confusion and murmuring in the crowd. The smaller Saiyan, referring to the planet as Earth, jokingly expresses appreciation for the planet. The larger Saiyan suggests giving the onlookers a friendly greeting as he merely raises an arm, obliterating the entire city as Tien and Chaozu witness the result 
resulting explosion from afar. In the aftermath, the area is decimated, sparing only the Saiyans and their space pods. Acknowledging his excessive approach, the larger Saiyan now known as Nappa is scolded by the smaller Saiyan, Vegeta, for potentially hindering their ability to sell the planet. Vegeta corrects Nappa about the Dragon Balls and emphasizes their first objective, gathering information from the one who killed Raditz. Frustrated by Nappa's actions and the likelihood of his explosion destroying the Dragon Balls they came for, Vegeta mentions their plan to search for the person with the highest battle power on the planet. He believes this individual will be either Raditz's killer or Kakarot's son. Despite Nappa's observation of several individuals with battle powers exceeding 1000, Vegeta asserts they're no match for them. Vegeta quickly identifies the two highest power readings and decides to investigate as he and Nappa take off. Yamcha and Krillin notice the Saiyan's movement, debating whether they're heading toward Tien and Chaozu or Piccolo and Gohan. Piccolo warns Gohan of the Saiyan's imminent arrival and in another location, Tien prepares to confront the Saiyans while Chaozu insists on joining him. At Kame House, Bulma and the others watch news coverage of a massive earthquake in East City, recognizing it as the Saiyan's arrival. Bulma suggests going to find the Saiyans using Raditz's device, but Master Roshi advises against getting involved, noting that their power is beyond their comprehension. Meanwhile, Goku continues racing down Snake Way. As the clock strikes 12.20 p.m., Piccolo and Gohan, the latter now wearing an outfit resembling Piccolo's, await the approaching threat. They notice people coming from all directions, and Krillin appears, prompting skepticism from Piccolo. Krillin tells Piccolo that he's been training for a year just for this moment, and Piccolo acknowledges Krillin's slight improvement, as Krillin informs both him and Gohan that Tien and the others will be arriving soon. Gohan recalls his father describing Krillin as small but strong, and after some dialogue is exchanged between the two, Krillin questions Gohan's training with Piccolo. The conversation is interrupted though, as Vegeta and Nappa arrive. Krillin is astonished by their overwhelming energy, and as the two land, Vegeta questions if the group have been eagerly awaiting their arrival. Piccolo confronts Vegeta and Nappa, demanding to know their intentions. Vegeta recognizes Piccolo's voice as the one who killed Raditz, revealing that their eye devices also serve as communicators. Nappa questions whether Piccolo is something called a Namekian, and Vegeta states it would make sense given he defeated Raditz. At the same time, Piccolo remains confused, while Krillin and Gohan inquire if he's really some sort of alien. Vegeta, suspecting Namekians possess above average power levels and unique abilities, assumes Piccolo was the one who created the Dragon Balls. Krillin is puzzled about how the Saiyans learned of the Dragon Balls, and Nappa clarifies that those are the main reason they came to Earth in the first place. Piccolo then clarifies that while he appreciates the backstory and understanding of his ancestry, he's certainly not the creator of the Dragon Balls. Preparing for an imminent attack, Piccolo stands firm, ready to get things started. At the lookout, Kami expresses surprise at discovering he and Piccolo's alien origin and speculates the origin of the Dragon Balls, noting that he created them in the past but feels someone on his home world must have done something similar. Vegeta, noting Piccolo's refusal to comply, decides to force the information out of him. After reading the group's battle powers of 981, 1220, and 1083, Nappa deems them too weak to pose a threat. Vegeta, however, instructs Nappa to remove his eye device now known as a Scouter, acknowledging the group's ability to manipulate their battle powers at will. Nappa complies, criticizing Raditz for relying too much on the Scouter's readings. This prompts disbelief from Piccolo and Krillin, as he called Raditz a weakling and reminisces on how it took the combined efforts of Goku and Piccolo to just barely take him down. Vegeta then orders Nappa to plant the six Cybermen that they have. Nappa does so and pours liquid from a bottle onto the seeds, prompting confusion from Krillin. Suddenly, six plant-like monsters sprout instantly, surprising Gohan, Piccolo, and Krillin. Vegeta directs them to attack the group, and suddenly, Tien and Chaozu arrive, as does Yamcha, much to Krillin's satisfaction. Tien notes the presence of more opponents on the battlefield, and Krillin asserts that the situation has changed. Vegeta, however, welcomes the challenge, and with six combatants and six Cybermen, suggests turning it into a game. Piccolo is angered by the Saiyan's dismissive attitude, but Krillin urges caution, stating that this could buy them some time until Goku's arrival. Tien volunteers to face the first Cybermen, much to the enjoyment of Nappa, who assumes the Earthling will be dealt with quickly. As the Cybermen charges at him, Tien effortlessly repels it and charges in. The Cyberman retaliates by splitting its head open and spraying a corrosive liquid, but Tien manages to evade the attack, and Krillin and Piccolo narrowly avoid the corrosive substance. Tien counterattacks, delivering a swift 
elbow to the Cyberman's face, and it plummets to the ground. Nappa is taken aback as Krillin and Chiaotzu cheer on Tien, but Vegeta finds the situation promising and declares they might get some form of entertainment after all. The Cyberman struggles to move as Tien stands over it menacingly. Nappa mentions that the Cybermen have battle powers over 1200, equal to Raditz, and Vegeta points out that Tien surpassed that. However, Nappa remains astonished. As the Cybermen begins to rise, Vegeta intervenes, merely using the flick of two fingers to completely obliterate it from the inside, much to everyone's surprise. When Nappa questions Vegeta's action, the Saiyan dismisses the Cybermen's chances of winning and reminds the others not to hold back. At the same time, the Z Fighters note Vegeta's devastating power. Krillin volunteers for the next round, but Yamcha steps forward, exclaiming playtime is over. Krillin insists on going first, but Yamcha cuts him off, explaining that Krillin has already been revived once with the Dragon Balls and can't be resurrected again if he were to get killed. Vegeta and Nappa release the next Cybermen, and Yamcha charges in as the two disappear. Their movements become too quick for Gohan to see, prompting Piccolo to instruct him to sense their key. Yamcha and the Cybermen exchange punches, with the Cybermen flying to a nearby mountain. Pursuing it, Yamcha is met with a sudden attack, but dodges it and retaliates with a powerful Kamehameha, sending the Cybermen crashing to the ground. Yamcha lands, confidently declaring his intent to face the remaining four Cybermen alone. However, the Cybermen unexpectedly revives, latches onto Yamcha, and self-destructs, creating a huge explosion, much to the surprise of the other Z Fighters. As the smoke dissipates, Krillin rushes to Yamcha's lifeless body, declaring him dead, and realizes he sacrificed himself in Krillin's place. Dissatisfied, Nappa exclaims he didn't want to see a draw, and Vegeta tells Krillin to clear the trash from the battlefield. Overwhelmed with anger, Krillin charges up, unleashing a two-handed blast and directs it at Vegeta and Nappa, fueled by a desire for revenge. The blast catches the attention of the Saiyans, and the Z Fighters move out of the way to avoid being hit. The Cybermen attempt to escape, but swiftly, Krillin alters the blast trajectory into the air, causing it to fragment into six smaller blasts aimed down at the four remaining Cybermen, Vegeta and Nappa. Three Cybermen are obliterated, and the fourth is nearly hit, with Vegeta and Nappa also taking the brunt of the attack. As the smoke dissipates, cheers erupt from the onlookers, and Krillin notes that he missed one of the targets. Suddenly, the surviving Cybermen leaps from the remaining smoke and targets Gohan, but Piccolo intervenes, grabbing its arm, delivering a powerful punch to its stomach, tossing it into the air, and finishing it off with a mouth blast that disintegrates it. Gohan expresses gratitude, but Piccolo dismisses it, clarifying that his actions were merely a warm-up for the impending battle, not a rescue mission. Soon after, emerging unharmed from the dust, Vegeta, alongside Nappa, asserts that if a spectacular fight is what the heroes desire, they'll have it, but it'll be over quick. Tien and Krillin express disbelief at the villain's survival, with Krillin noting that he used all the power he had for his attack. Nappa declares his intent to take on all five opponents alone, anticipating an entertaining confrontation. As Nappa powers up, causing the earth to shake, Chaozu informs Tien that his telekinetic abilities are ineffective against Nappa. As the Saiyan's energy surges, the tension builds as Nappa prepares to strike, leaving everyone in shock. The ground continues to tremble as Nappa intensifies his power, and he charges toward Tien. Tien attempts to block the incoming punch with his arm, but Nappa forcefully punches it off with a single strike, eliciting a scream of pain from Tien. As Nappa prepares to land the final blow, Tien swiftly takes flight to avoid being killed. While airborne, he readies an attack against Nappa, but in an instant, Nappa ascends beside Tien and kicks him forcefully back to the ground. Witnessing this, Chaozu panics, and struggling to rise, Tien fights through his injuries as Nappa acknowledges his persistence. Krillin rushes in to assist despite Piccolo's objections, and noticing the Earthling running in to interfere, Nappa gestures with his hand, creating a massive explosion that sends Krillin flying backward, thwarting his plans. When the smoke clears, it's revealed that Nappa's created a hole so deep in the ground that even Piccolo couldn't see the bottom of it. In the ensuing chaos, Krillin panics as Chaozu is nowhere in sight. Fearing he'd been caught in the blast, Vegeta suddenly alerts Nappa to check behind him as Chaozu comes flying in. Chaozu clings to Nappa's back, much to the surprise of Krillin and Tien, as Nappa struggles to get him off. Tien implores Chaozu to escape, however, through telepathy, Chaozu bids Tien a farewell, begging him not to die. Realizing the impending sacrifice, Tien yells for his companion to stop, but Chaozu elicits a bright flash of light and self-destructs on Nappa, as Tien and the 
remaining Z fighters watch in awe. Tien, consumed by rage, screams out for the loss of his best friend, while Piccolo acknowledges Chao Tzu's bravery, noting his sacrificial move was an excellent strategy. However, when the smoke clears, Nappa remains virtually unscathed. Meanwhile, Goku maintains his rapid descent along Snake Way, sensing he might not make it in time. Simultaneously, Nappa harbors a desire to annihilate the rest of the fighters, while Krillin mourns Chao Tzu's sacrifice, stating he gave his life for nothing. Tien, overcome with anger, points out that Chao Tzu has already been resurrected once by the Dragon Balls and can never be brought back again. In response, Nappa callously suggests sending him to join the departed Chao Tzu in the afterlife. Recognizing Nappa's attack patterns, Piccolo discreetly informs Krillin and Gohan of the opportune moment to strike. Vegeta, having listened in, approves of the plan, asserting that a brief lapse of attention could lead to missing a chance. Piccolo, however, warns Vegeta that he won't be laughing once son Goku arrives. Puzzled, Vegeta questions Goku's identity as Nappa descends toward Tien. Piccolo and Krillin swiftly react, launching a coordinated assault. Piccolo's punch propels Nappa toward Krillin, who pounds him downward. Piccolo urgently instructs Gohan to unleash a blast, but Gohan hesitates, leaving Krillin and Piccolo to execute the attack themselves. However, their efforts prove futile as Nappa regains his bearings and evades the attack. He states that the group almost had him, but now all they've done is sped up their own deaths. Tien, determined to avenge Chao Tzu, states that once he's finished, he'll join him in death and they'll never be separated again. Tien then charges up and unleashes a powerful tri-beam attack, much to Nappa's surprise as he's engulfed in it, surprising everyone on the battlefield. However, when it's all said and done, Nappa emerges from the attack, sustaining minimal damage. Tien acknowledges he's failed as he drops to the ground dead. Vegeta, unimpressed, ridicules the fallen warrior, while Krillin desperately cries out for Goku, wondering where he is. Piccolo contemplates the seeming invincibility of Nappa, while Krillin is dismayed by the loss of all his friends. Urgently, Krillin implores Goku to hasten his arrival, leading Vegeta to question the identity of this Goku. Nappa, intent on killing the remaining trio, excludes Piccolo for now, as he and Vegeta still seek information on the Dragon Balls from him. Despite Krillin's comment on Piccolo's luck, Piccolo asserts that the Saiyans aim to eliminate them all anyway, so it doesn't matter. Krillin then questions Piccolo's confidence in their victory, but Piccolo asserts he has none, as Nappa far surpasses Raditz, leaving Krillin fearful at the idea of meeting his end. At the lookout, Kami wonders where Goku could be, sensing his imminent demise. He confides in Mr. Popo, who inquires further, and asserts that Piccolo is about to die. On the battlefield, Piccolo proposes to Krillin that they descend to the ground, as Nappa asserts the futility of their actions. The two descend, and Nappa swoops down from above, prepared to finish them off. As our heroes prepare for the confrontation, Vegeta intervenes, telling Nappa to stop. Confused, Nappa questions Vegeta on why he stopped him, and Vegeta says he needs to ask something of the group. Questioning whether this son Goku is Kakarot, Vegeta questions why Krillin keeps shouting for him, and Krillin asserts that's indeed who he is. Despite Vegeta's skepticism, stating that Kakarot being the Earthling's last hope is laughable at best, Krillin passionately declares Goku's enhanced strength, saying he's not the same man as before. Although Nappa dismisses the notion, assuming Kakarot to be scared, Gohan unwaveringly believes in his father's arrival. Vegeta, amused by their trust, decides to wait for Goku, enraging Nappa. Despite Nappa's desire for immediate action, Vegeta insists on waiting for three hours, threatening to kill the group if Kakarot doesn't appear within that time. Frustrated for having been asleep for a year and itching for action though, Nappa launches in, but Vegeta commands him to stop, scaring Nappa, who a apologizes for getting carried away. Vegeta then turns to Piccolo and Krillin, declaring that they have three more hours left to live. Soon after, apologizing for his fear, Gohan is dismissed by Piccolo, who disapproves of cowards. Krillin tries to defend Gohan, stating it's his first real fight, and Piccolo ponders the immense power possessed by Vegeta, who frightened the formidable Nappa. At the same time, curious, Nappa questions Vegeta's motives, prompting an explanation about Kakarot's perceived betrayal of the Saiyan race, and the the desire to make him suffer by killing his friends and son in front of him. Vegeta anticipates torturing Kakarot, which is an idea Nappa gets behind. Nappa expresses eagerness to handle the trio, and Vegeta allows this, so long as Piccolo is left alive to tell them about the Dragon Balls first. Despite Krillin's suggestion to flee, Piccolo emphasizes that the Saiyans plan to destroy the Earth's inhabitants anyway, so they'll meet the same fate regardless of choosing to run. Krillin implores
caused Goku to expedite his return as the Saiyan races down Snake Way and Kami anxiously awaits. However, three hours come and go and Goku is nowhere to be found. Vegeta removes his scouter, noting that three hours have passed and expresses disappointment over Kakarot not only being a traitor, but a coward as well. Gohan passionately defends his father against the accusation of cowardice, while Krillin questions the reason for Goku's delay. Nappa, having discarded his outer armor, is prepared to engage the group, stating that Kakarot won't be able to witness their deaths. Krillin fears their impending demise, but Piccolo, maintaining a sliver of optimism, outlines a plan for potential victory. He assigns Krillin the task of distracting Nappa, allowing Piccolo to seize his tail, followed by Gohan delivering a powerful attack, enough to potentially defeat the Saiyan. Gohan nervously says he won't run away again, and Piccolo reiterates that the fate of the Earth rests in his hands. Despite the grim circumstances, Krillin finds hope in their strategy. Meanwhile, Kami suddenly senses Goku's key, signifying his return. Kami swiftly teleports to retrieve Goku at the end of Snake Way, and the two head back to Earth, much to King Yemma's surprise, as Goku actually managed to make it back from King Kai's place. After a quick return to the lookout, Goku, assisted by Kami, receives words of encouragement and leaps off the palace, descending toward Earth. Approaching Korin Tower, Korin notes that Goku looks tired and tosses the Saiyan the last two sensu beans, wishing him good luck in his battle. Goku consumes one to restore his energy and summons the flying Nimbus just before reaching the ground and they swiftly head toward the battlefield. At the same time, Krillin initiates the plan by charging at Nappa, catching Vegeta's attention, who surmises they must have a strategy. As Krillin nears, he blasts the ground, propelling himself into the air. Seizing the opportunity, Piccolo rushes in from behind to grab Nappa's tail and yells to Gohan to attack. However, Gohan's subsequent move is thwarted as Nappa elbows Piccolo, much to everyone's shock. Piccolo loses consciousness, and Vegeta scoffs at the group's belief that they wouldn't have trained their tails by now for scenarios such as these. Nappa taunts the trio, saying how even their planet's best couldn't stand up to a single blow. He then turns his attention to Gohan, standing directly in front of him, insisting that being part Saiyan, the boy needs to provide him with some entertainment. With a forceful kick, Nappa propels Gohan into the air and then backs him into a nearby mountain. Nappa tells Gohan not to die on him just yet, and despite coughing up blood, Gohan manages to rise to his feet just as Nappa advances toward him. However, Krillin intervenes, leaping in to deliver a powerful kick to Nappa's face, followed by a punch, sending him flying into the distance. Krillin pursues Nappa, who regains composure and heads back towards Krillin. As Nappa throws a punch, Krillin expertly maneuvers with backflips to evade the attacks, catching Vegeta's attention, who notes his moves aren't half bad. Nappa rushes toward Krillin again, and seizing the opportunity, Krillin raises his right hand, concentrating his energy to form a sizable disc above his palm, announcing the Destructo Disc. He propels the disc toward Nappa, who initially stands his ground, poised to take on the attack. However, Vegeta urgently tells Nappa to dodge as the disc narrowly misses and the attack slices through a mountain like a saw blade, leaving a noticeable cut on Nappa's cheek. Now infuriated at the minor injury inflicted, Nappa retaliates with a blast aimed at Krillin. Although Krillin manages to evade the direct hit, he succumbs to the shockwave. Just as Nappa prepares to deliver the final blow, Piccolo intervenes, blasting Nappa in the back and leaving a distinct burn mark as Krillin crashes to the ground. Nappa, surprised by Piccolo being awake, is met by Vegeta's laughter, assuming the Earthlings may be too much for him. Piccolo states that the Earth is not to be underestimated, and suddenly, Piccolo senses an extraordinary power, as does Gohan, prompting confusion from Nappa. Piccolo then declares that Son Goku is headed their way. Piccolo shouts that it's undeniably Son Goku, sparking excitement in Gohan about his father's imminent arrival. Nappa inquires about Kakarot's whereabouts, prompting Vegeta to pick up his scouter once more and investigate. Meanwhile, Goku continues soaring on the flying Nimbus, sensing two significant key, two even more substantial key, and one smaller key. Perplexed by the seemingly incorrect number of fighters on the battlefield, he wonders if someone died and urges Nimbus to hasten its speed. As Vegeta studies his scouter, his eyes widen with realization. Nappa wonders if what the Earthlings are saying is true, and Vegeta informs him that he's not sure if it's Kakarot, but whoever it is will arrive in four minutes and has a battle power that exceeds five. 5, Nappa expresses his shock, and Vegeta speculates that if the others could manipulate their power rating so drastically, Kakarot likely possesses the same capability, meaning that 5000 may only be the starting point of his power. With urgency, Vegeta commands Nappa to kill
kill Piccolo and Gohan, exclaiming that with this new power approaching, they may prove to be an issue if they team up with it. Nappa raises the question about the Dragon Balls, and Vegeta speculates that on the Namekians' home world, planet Namek, they might even have more potent Dragon Balls. Believing in the legend due to Kakarot's resurrection, Vegeta asserts that the priority is to eliminate the current threats. Gohan, alarmed, urges Piccolo to flee, expressing his determination to stall Nappa until Goku arrives. He emphasizes the consequence of Piccolo's death, leading to Kami's demise and the Dragon Balls being lost. However, Piccolo dismisses Gohan's belief in his ability to hold off Nappa alone, and Krillin finds himself unable to move. Offended at the idea of a kid holding him off, Nappa charges toward Gohan, and Piccolo rushes in to save him. To his surprise though, the young warrior unleashes a furious kick to Nappa's face, propelling him into a nearby mountain. The dust settles, and despite emerging from the debris battered, Nappa quickly recovers, furious, and states it's time to end things now. The Saiyan then charges up and launches an explosive blast directly at Gohan. Unable to escape in time, Gohan finds himself in imminent danger, but Piccolo intervenes, positioning himself in front of Gohan and taking the devastating blast head on. As the smoke dissipates, Nappa believes the boy to be dead, but is taken aback when he discovers that the attack hit Piccolo instead. The battered Piccolo weakly advises Gohan to escape and then collapses to the ground. Panicked, Gohan questions why Piccolo saved him, to which Piccolo simply repeats his plea for Gohan to run. Tearfully, Gohan implores Piccolo not to die as his dad will be there soon, and Nappa mocks Piccolo for facing an early demise. Meanwhile, Goku continues his swift journey on Nimbus. He senses a diminishing key and realizes that someone is dying. At the lookout, Kami is fading away and notes that Goku didn't make it in time, but expresses relief that in the end, Piccolo surpassed even him, the god of Earth. On the battlefield, Piccolo chuckles at the irony of the great demon king Piccolo sacrificing himself to protect a child, acknowledging that Gohan and his father must have rubbed off on him. Piccolo says that Gohan is the only person who ever treated him with respect and thanks him for the time they spent together for the last few months as he passes away. Goku feels Piccolo's key vanish and Kami bids farewell to Mr. Popo as he vanishes from the world of the living. Gohan, engulfed in grief and anger, places his hands over his head and initiates a Masenko attack. Krillin notices Gohan's insane boosting key, and Vegeta, monitoring his scouter, is astonished by Gohan's battle power of 2800. Gohan directs his Masenko at Nappa, but Nappa deflects it with relative ease, much to Gohan's surprise. Nappa notes the destructive force of Gohan's attack, and Vegeta notes the sharp decline in Gohan's battle power. Gohan apologizes to Piccolo for being unable to avenge him, and notes his lack of strength to even escape. As Nappa approaches Gohan for the final blow, he attempts to crush Gohan with his foot, excited to see Kakarot's face when he finds his son smashed to a pulp. However, as the Saiyan smashes down, Gohan mysteriously disappears from beneath Nappa's foot, reappearing floating on the flying Nimbus nearby. Both confusion and tension builds as Vegeta gazes skyward, and as the warrior touches down, everyone recognizes Goku's long-awaited arrival. Gohan and Krillin express genuine joy, while Vegeta sarcastically suggests Goku's arrived to spout some nonsense about defeating them. Goku approaches Piccolo's lifeless body past Nappa, confirming his death as Gohan acknowledges the Namekian sacrifice for him. Observing Tien and Yamcha's lifeless bodies as well, Goku grows angry and Nappa taunts the Saiyan's friends, going on to state the demise of Chaozu as well, who blown himself up, leaving no remains. Additionally, Goku points out that Kami has also met his end, as Vegeta notes his rising battle power. Goku walks in Nappa's direction, assumed to be eager to fight, and as the Saiyan throws a punch at Goku, he suddenly vanishes behind him and moves toward Krillin. This surprises Nappa as well as Vegeta, who notes Kakarot's speed. Goku shares half of the last Sensu Bean with both Krillin and Gohan, and the two are restored to full strength. Goku commends Krillin's noticeable increase in power, but Krillin states it wasn't enough to handle the Saiyans. Goku acknowledges the same from Gohan, and the boy attributes his teachings to Piccolo, but mourns the death of his friend. Krillin then states that reviving their friends with the Dragon Balls are no longer an option due to Kami's demise, and proposes avenging their fallen friends together. However, Goku asserts he'll handle the Saiyans alone, and tells Krillin and Gohan to keep their distance. Despite their protests, Goku's anger intensifies, prompting Krillin to hold Gohan back and let Goku take things from here. Krillin thinks to himself that he's never seen Goku this angry before, and finds it best not to intervene. Confronting Nappa, Goku stands menacing 
menacingly as the Saiyan threatens to kill him. Goku then vows to make Nappa and Vegeta pay as he begins powering up, triggering seismic activity and launching rocks into the air. Surprisingly, Vegeta's scouter registers an increasing power of 7,000 and 8,000 before Goku abruptly stops. Panicked, Nappa inquires about Kakarot's current battle power, prompting Vegeta to reveal that it's over 8,000. Nappa yells in astonishment, and Goku states he likely won't need to use the Kaioken, leaving Vegeta perplexed. Asserting that there's no way he can be defeated, Nappa charges at Goku, and in a swift motion, Goku appears behind him, delivering a forceful kick that sends Nappa face first into the ground. As Gohan and Krillin sit in amazement, Nappa wonders how Goku managed to get behind him. Nappa seethes with anger as Goku confidently asserts he's not as strong as he thought. Observing from a safe distance, Krillin and Gohan ponder this unexpected turn of events, while Vegeta recognizes the difference in Kakarot's battle power compared to his battle with Raditz. Nappa inquires if Goku is saying he's nothing but talk, and the Saiyan confirms. Determined to prove Goku wrong though, Nappa powers up and charges at him. However, Goku effortlessly evades every punch and kick, and as Nappa delivers another attack, Goku disappears, creating a considerable distance between them. Krillin and Gohan struggle to follow Goku's rapid movements, leaving Vegeta astonished at Kakarot's remarkable increase in strength. With swift movements, Goku rushes toward Nappa, moving fast enough to stand on his head. Nappa attempts to crush him with his hands overhead, but Goku reappears in front of him, delivering a powerful punch to his stomach and declaring that attack for Chiaotzu. Goku ducks Nappa's retaliatory kick and lands another punch which sends Nappa flying, declaring that for Yamcha. As Nappa stops himself from crashing into a nearby mountain, he grows angry and hurls an explosive blast at Goku. Unfazed, Goku stands still and neutralizes it with a shout, shocking Nappa and Vegeta as he soars into the air and declares his next attack for Tien as he knocks Nappa back down. Descending after him, Goku declares his next attack for Piccolo and delivers a forceful kick. Nappa crashes into a mountain but swiftly emerges, now visibly infuriated. Nappa asserts his status as an elite warrior, denouncing Kakarot as a low-class warrior and states that he won't be made a fool of by someone like him. Excited by Goku's strength, Krillin and Gohan watch. Suddenly, Vegeta intervenes, instructing Nappa to calm down and think clearly as Kakarot isn't an unbeatable opponent. Nappa heeds the advice, expressing gratitude while Vegeta, privately thinking on Nappa's foolishness, asserts he may have to step in the way things are going. Nappa, noting that Kakarot got him angry before, notes that he'll show him what he's really made of. Goku, expressing eagerness, confirms that this is the fight he desired, but Nappa dismisses it as a bluff. Vegeta, however, perceives that Kakarot isn't just talking tough, but has the confidence to back it up. Nappa then initiates a power-up and flicks his hand upward, causing the ground beneath Goku to erupt, similar to his destructive rampage in East City. Goku skillfully evades the explosion by flying out of harm's way, but Nappa quickly detects him and gives chase. A punch from Nappa is met with a dodge and a counter kick from Goku, leading to a brief exchange of blows. Impressed, Goku remarks that Nappa has improved significantly, provoking laughter from the Saiyan, who threatens to conclude the battle with his next move. Nappa then unleashes a massive mouth blast at Goku, who at point blank range deflects it with a Kamehameha just before impact. A resulting explosion ensues, surprising Vegeta, who's taken aback by Goku's swift and precise defense. As Goku recovers unscathed, Nappa, bewildered, can't believe Goku brushed aside his best technique, prompting Goku to acknowledge Nappa as a formidable opponent. Suddenly, Vegeta intervenes, declaring that Nappa is unable to finish the job and forcing him to step in to handle the situation. Krillin and Gohan, intrigued by Vegeta's confidence, ponder the power that even the formidable Nappa fears. Disgruntled and ashamed, Nappa warns Goku that he'll soon regret crossing them as Vegeta, a genius fighter named after the planet Vegeta, will be facing him soon. Nappa descends, intent on backing out of the fight, but asserts he can't just run away as he targets Krillin and Gohan, much to Goku's shock. In a sudden move, Nappa dives down toward the two as Goku yells he won't make it in time. In response, the Saiyan unleashes a resounding cry of Kaioken as he accelerates, crashing into the back of Nappa with intense force. This act surprises Vegeta as Goku intercepts the Saiyan before he hits the ground, catches him, and holds him above his head next to Krillin and Gohan. Goku throws Nappa's incapacitated body in front of Vegeta, announcing his inability to continue the fight and implores Vegeta to take his friend and depart from Earth. Puzzled by Goku's sudden burst of 
speed and power, Vegeta reflects, wondering what just happened. As Nappa groans in pain, Vegeta remains in disbelief, and Krillin questions Goku about the technique he just used, suspecting he learned it from King Kai. Goku confirms and elaborates that it's the Kaioken, a technique that enables him to control all of the ki in his body, amplifying it instantly. When executed correctly, strength, speed, destructive power, and defense significantly surge. While Krillin and Gohan express admiration for the technique, Vegeta, nearby, wonders what the group are discussing. Krillin wonders why Goku didn't use the Kaioken from the start, and Goku cautions that there are drawbacks to using the technique incorrectly. He recalls King Kai's warning in a flashback, stating that any mistake in controlling the Kaioken could break down the body with a maximum multiplier of two, exceeding which could impose a severe strain. Meanwhile, an injured Nappa pleads with Vegeta for assistance. Vegeta callously takes Nappa's hand, smirks, and hurls him into the air. Nappa frantically questions Vegeta's motives, and Vegeta tells him he has no use for a paralyzed Saiyan. Vegeta then powers up as he declares death to Nappa as he launches a blast at him, scaring the Saiyan, who dies in the resulting massive explosion. As the smoke clears, Vegeta turns to Goku, who safely ascended into the air, holding on to Krillin and Gohan. As Goku silently marvels at Vegeta's power, Krillin expresses his shock that he killed his own ally. Goku then tells Gohan and Krillin to return to Kame House right away, and Krillin agrees, but Gohan hesitates. However, Krillin tells Gohan that Vegeta is too much for them to handle, and if they stay, they'll only be distracting Goku. Before they depart though, Krillin wonders if Goku can switch his battle location, considering he doesn't want the remaining bodies of their friends destroyed when they bring them back to life. Goku, however, wonders what Krillin means by this, as with Piccolo and Kami gone, the Dragon Balls are rendered useless. Gohan wonders what Krillin is implying as well, to which Krillin replies that he'll explain everything later, assuming Goku manages to defeat Vegeta. Goku asserts the need to win, agreeing to change locations as requested. Krillin, expressing his apologies for relying solely on Goku, extends his hand, urging his friend not to die. After a handshake, Goku playfully pats Gohan on the head, suggesting they go fishing after all is said and done. Goku then lands, proposing to Vegeta that they finish their battle someplace else. The two soar off, leaving Gohan and Krillin behind, and eventually reach a rocky desert with numerous formations, where Vegeta chuckles, proclaiming this is the place Kakarot has chosen for his grave. Vegeta taunts Kakarot, expressing he should feel honored, as a low-class warrior like him gets to tangle with the super elite. He explains the Saiyan process where a newborn's fighting ability determines their fate, sending those with inferior potential to planets lacking threatening inhabitants, and states that Goku was one of those unlucky few. Goku, appreciative, acknowledges that the Earth is his home, and asserts that even a low-class warrior can surpass an elite if he puts his mind to it. Vegeta, however, dismisses Goku's notion, deeming it a humorous joke, and vows to show him a wall he'll never be able to overcome with training alone. The Saiyans assume fighting stances, and the battlefield goes quiet as the two stare each other down. Suddenly, Goku makes the first move and charges at Vegeta. Punches are exchanged, and Goku attempts to kick Vegeta, but Vegeta skillfully evades Goku's kick with backflips. Goku pursues him, and converging once more, Vegeta delivers an elbow to Goku's face, but Goku regains control and ascends into the air. From behind, Vegeta swings at Goku, who deftly dodges. A sequence of kicks and evasions follows as the two soar through the air, exchanging blows. Amidst the battle, Vegeta taunts Goku, wondering if he can do better than this. Goku is kicked in the stomach and manages to dodge a kick that follows, as Vegeta states Kakarot displayed more power when he fought Nappa and demands to see it as he forcefully drives Goku toward the ground. Goku, however, regains control and safely lands on a nearby rock formation. Vegeta joins him on another rock, leaving Goku to privately acknowledge that Vegeta isn't even taking the fight seriously yet and has already surpassed his speed and technique. Determined, Goku declares he'll show Vegeta the power he wants to see as he ignites the Kaioken and launches a shockwave attack. Vegeta evades by flying upwards, but Goku pursues him, managing to land a punch to his face. Goku continues the assault, delivering more hits and a final kick that sends Vegeta flying into the distance. As Goku gives chase, Vegeta recovers, accelerates, and retaliates with a powerful kick. The two touch down, and despite Goku's awe at Vegeta, Vegeta's strength, he silently admits he's getting excited. As Goku stands smiling, Vegeta wonders if he's given up hope or if he somehow has more power waiting to be unveiled. Goku, however, visibly thrilled by the challenge, revels in the confrontation, likely fueled by the battle.
battle hungry Saiyan blood flowing within him. In response, Vegeta assumes Goku's hit his limit and resolves to present him with a final parting gift, the overwhelming power befitting a Saiyan elite. As Vegeta begins to power up, the earth quakes, surrounding and swirling dark clouds, creating a thunderous atmosphere similar to a typhoon. The Saiyan's power continues to swell and he suddenly lets out a powerful scream as the sky reverts to normal and the rock formation surrounding him crumble to the ground. Goku notes the change in the Earth's conditions, but suddenly turns his attention to Vegeta, who stands before him menacingly. Vegeta declares to Kakarot that the battle is over, and charges toward him without hesitation. Mid-air, Vegeta smashes Goku with a headbutt, followed by an elbow to the stomach, sending Goku hurtling toward the ground. Goku manages to save himself, only for Vegeta to kick him from behind, redirecting him toward a rock formation. Swiftly, Goku lands atop the rocks, spotting Vegeta hovering in the air above. Vegeta launches a blast toward Goku, and in response, Goku initiates his Kaioken times 2 as he leaps into the air, the resulting explosion having been where he stood before. Vegeta launches another blast at Goku, who, with little time to react, narrowly dodges it, losing a significant portion of his shirt. Landing, Goku curses Vegeta's formidable speed and power, realizing that even a Kaioken times 2 fell short. Determined, Goku discards the remnants of his shirt, stating the intention to elevate the technique to a Kaioken times three. Nearby, Yajirobe watches cautiously from behind a rock formation, acknowledging both Goku and Vegeta's extraordinary abilities. Contemplating the potential strain of a Kaioken times three on his body, Goku is spurred on by Vegeta's taunts, urging him to make a move. Goku, at the same time, thinks to himself that he won't have a choice but to push the Kaioken further, lest he be defeated by Vegeta. As Vegeta boasts about being the strongest Saiyan, even among the most elite of their race, Yajirobe remains hidden, wondering if he should leave while he has the chance. Suddenly, Vegeta is surprised as he witnesses Goku power up, yelling for his body not to fail on him as he plans to unleash the Kaioken times three. Meanwhile, on his distant planet, King Kai expresses concern about Goku exceeding a two times Kaioken, but believes it may be necessary given he doesn't stand a chance against Vegeta the way he is now. Back on Earth, the onlookers at Kame House are alerted by Bulma that Goku must be fighting as they monitor the escalating battle using Raditz's scouter. The readings surge from 17,000 to 19,000 to 21,000, but as the scouter continues to rise, it succumbs to the intensity of the ongoing battle and explodes, leaving everyone in awe. On the battlefield, Goku gains control of the Times 3 Kaioken, causing Vegeta to react with alarm. With a glimmer in his eye, Goku swiftly approaches Vegeta, delivering a powerful punch that propels him through the air. Goku descends beneath the falling Vegeta, launching a direct upward assault. In a sharp turn, Goku swiftly evades Vegeta's attempt to counter with a blast and initiates a series of agile maneuvers. Vegeta attempts to throw a blast at Goku from afar, but the Saiyan manages to avoid it and appear behind Vegeta, delivering a forceful kick to his face that sends him crashing into the rocks below. Immediately, Vegeta emerges from the rubble irate, but Goku gives him no time to recover as he swoops in, leaps behind Vegeta, and executes a knee strike that sends the Saiyan flying. Vegeta manages to land on his feet and retaliate with a rapid charge toward Goku, but Goku effortlessly dodges Vegeta's punch and counters with a forceful gut punch, leaving Vegeta reeling and coughing up blood. Goku, now powered down from the Kaioken, stands out of breath as Vegeta steps back, angrily acknowledging that Kakarot's power level has exceeded his own. As Goku thinks to himself that he'll need to end the battle quickly to avoid succumbing to exhaustion, Yajirobe entertains the thought that Goku might emerge victorious in this intense confrontation. Vegeta, a super elite warrior, grapples with the disbelief that he, the supposed greatest warrior in the universe, could be defeated by a low-class commoner. Goku, reflecting on the intense pain coursing through his entire body, recognizes the toll of pushing himself with the Kaioken times three. Observing blood on his glove after swiping his hand across his mouth, Vegeta becomes enraged at the notion that someone like Goku could draw out his blood. Fueled by anger, Vegeta threatens to blow the earth into a million pieces and ascends rapidly into the sky. Fully powered up, Vegeta readies a devastating blast aimed directly at the earth, exclaiming that Kakarot can dodge if he wants, but the planet will suffer for it. In response, Goku opts to counter with a triple Kaioken.
Ken Kamehameha and readies himself for the confrontation. Both Saiyans power up their blasts further, Vegeta exclaiming that Kakarot will never be able to stop his Gallic gun. As Vegeta unleashes his attack, Goku screams out, firing his Kamehameha upward. The two formidable attacks approach each other rapidly and collide midway, both aiming to win. Vegeta, shocked that Kakarot's blast is similar to his Gallic gun, continues exerting his energy while Goku does the same. The intense struggle continues, but Goku, determined to prevail, declares a Kaioken times four, and the Kamehameha intensifies significantly. This overwhelming burst of energy overpowers the Gallic gun and propels Vegeta away into the sky, much to his own shock. Exhausted, Goku powers down, gasping for breath in the aftermath. Visibly exhausted, Goku is approached by Yajirobe, who expresses relief that the battle is over. Yajirobe congratulates Goku on defeating Vegeta, patting him on the back, but Goku screams out in pain, confusing him. When questioned what's wrong, Yajirobe learns that Goku put too much strain on his body. Goku then warns Yajirobe to run while he can, stating that Vegeta is still alive, and asserting that if a Kamehameha were all it took to take him down, he wouldn't have had trouble defeating him in the first place. Yajirobe wonders if Goku can still win this, but Goku expresses doubt, saying he's hit his limit. In response, Yajirobe wishes Goku good luck and takes off. Meanwhile, despite the ongoing Kamehameha propelling Vegeta skyward, he eventually breaks free as the beam continues on. Enraged at being overpowered by Kakarot, Vegeta briefly loses composure, wondering how Kakarot's power could be higher than his, as he's a Saiyan elite, the strongest in the galaxy. After a brief moment to catch his breath, Vegeta smirks, now intent on transforming into a great ape to increase his strength dramatically, although he despises the idea of doing so just to defeat Kakarot. However, in his search for the full moon to trigger the transformation, Vegeta realizes it's gone and investigates. On King Kai's planet, the Kai watches Vegeta, thinking to himself that the moon is gone now, thanks to Piccolo's intervention in the past. The Kai goes on to say though, that even without his great ape transformation, Vegeta is formidable and with Goku at his limit, things aren't looking too good. However, King Kai believes that if Goku can somehow hit Vegeta with the spirit bomb, he'll win for sure. Back on Earth, Goku wonders why Vegeta hasn't returned yet, unaware of the Saiyan's intentions. At the same time, Vegeta remains in the sky, puzzled about the missing moon, and deduces Kakarot took it out before their fight got started. Angered, Vegeta devises another plan, stating his power level may drop a bit, but the look on Kakarot's face will be more than enough to make up for it, as he soars back to the battlefield. Vegeta lands in front of Goku, as Goku thinks to himself that his only chance of winning will be to finish Vegeta with the spirit bomb. Vegeta, moments after, calls Goku out for blasting the moon out of the sky in an attempt to outsmart him, but Goku sits in confusion. Vegeta then begins to explain why the Saiyans transform at the sight of a full moon. He says that when sunlight is bounced back from the moon, it contains what Saiyans call Blutz Waves. When the moon is full, these Blutz Waves exceed 17 million Zenos, which is a unit used to measure waves of celestial light. Vegeta goes on to state that when 17 million Zenos of Blutz Waves are absorbed through the Saiyan eyes through gazing at the moon, their tail reacts, triggering their transformation. The Earth's moon may have been destroyed, but unfortunately for Goku, Vegeta reveals that there are very few Saiyans, including himself, that are capable of creating an artificial moon to reach the required amount of Zenos to trigger their great ape transformations. Vegeta then declares Goku's imminent death as Goku wonders what the Saiyan is planning as his power level dropped after creating a strange ball of light. Vegeta then tosses said ball of light into the air and commands it to burst open and mix with the Earth's oxygen. A bright flash of light ensues and when it's over, Goku notices the artificial moon in the sky as King Kai panics at what this means. Vegeta exclaims that Kakarot will regret having lost his tail and begins his transformation into a great ape. Somewhere further away, Krillin and Gohan approach Kame House, but they notice the distant glow of the artificial moon, wondering what it is. Suddenly, the two sense an immense key not belonging to Goku and assume it has to be Vegeta. Concerned, Gohan decides to go back, realizing that his father is in serious danger and will die if he doesn't help. Krillin insists they're no match for Vegeta, and Gohan concurs, but says he's going anyway. As the boy flies off, Krillin decides to join him. Meanwhile, Goku is horrified at the sight of Vegeta's great ape transformation. As the transformation concludes, Vegeta, capable of speech in this form, taunts Goku, going on to state that the power Saiyans gain in their great ape form is 10 times greater than before. Goku, now aware of the transformation, recalls his grandpa Gohan warning 
warning him about the great ape monster and the danger it poses during a full moon. He also reflects on Kami preventing his tail from regrowing. With all this in mind, it dawns on Goku that the monster who killed Grandpa Gohan all those years ago and wreaked havoc on the Tenkaichi Budokai was him. Goku then apologizes to his grandfather, stating that when he dies, he'll visit him in the afterlife to apologize personally. From a distance, Yajirobe is astonished at the monstrous form, recognizing the Saiyan's attire and correctly assumes it to be Vegeta transformed. Goku resolves to show Vegeta the power of the spirit bomb and is suddenly bombarded as the Saiyan strikes down at Goku. Goku narrowly evades, but is kicked towards the ground. As Vegeta charges in laughing, Goku attempts a Kaioken and flies skyward, but Vegeta effortlessly swats him away with his tail. Vegeta charges in again, and mid-air, Goku contemplates his limited options, realizing there's insufficient time to charge a spirit bomb as Vegeta is too fast, even in his great ape form. He says not even a five times Kaioken would work, and states he needs just 10 seconds to focus his energy. Suddenly, Goku then gets an idea, deciding to borrow one of Tien's techniques. Employing the solar flare, he blinds Vegeta, providing an opportunity to fly over to the rock formations in the distance. Believing he's far enough away, Goku pleads with the earthlings and all living things for a bit of their energy, while Vegeta grows furious in his temporarily sightless state. Goku persistently gathers energy for the spirit bomb, noting that Vegeta's eyesight is gradually returning. Despite being unable to see Goku, Vegeta senses him in the distance, infuriated. As life energy begins to gather for Goku, Vegeta suddenly spots him. Realizing he's been discovered, Goku believes he has a bit more time before Vegeta reaches him, and at the same time, the energy collection for the spirit bomb is completed. However, as Goku attempts to launch the attack at Vegeta, the Saiyan releases a massive mouth blast, causing a colossal explosion and obliterating the rock formation Goku stood on. Yajirobe is blown away, and as the dust settles, Gohan and Krillin continue flying back toward the battlefield. Unprepared for such an attack, Goku sits among the rubble, noting how Vegeta caught him off guard completely. Rising to his feet, he then states that his efforts for the spirit bomb have gone to waste as Vegeta lands in front of him. Vegeta mocks Kakarot, noting that he's hit his limit, and Goku, barely able to move, says he doesn't have a chance of defeating Vegeta anymore as he used up nearly all his energy creating the spirit bomb. Vegeta approaches, ready to step on Goku, but Goku narrowly avoids it. Goku tries getting away, but Vegeta swiftly swats Goku into a nearby rock formation, leaving him unable to move. As Vegeta begins to step on his legs, Gohan and Krillin notice Goku's diminishing key. Vegeta lifts his foot as Goku screams in agony, his legs revealed to be completely crushed. Vegeta jokes about accidentally crushing Goku's legs and states that next he'll accidentally crush his heart. Goku, in pain, tries to catch his breath as Vegeta readies his massive finger, telling Kakarot it's the end and discourages him from coming back to life as the earth will be gone even if he does. Goku, lying in the dirt, believes it's the end, noting that Vegeta completely beat him and finds it frustrating that he won't be able to challenge him again as he's about to die. Vegeta moves in to impale Goku with one of his fingers, but Goku surprises him by firing a one-handed blast into Vegeta's right eye as the Saiyan screams in pain. Laying back down, Goku tells Vegeta to consider that a farewell present and states that he doesn't even have enough strength left to blow his nose as he tells the Saiyan to do as he pleases. Reeling and angered by the damage done to his face, Vegeta, bleeding from his eye, grabs Goku for his audacity and starts squeezing him, intent to crush him like a grape. Vegeta maintains his grip on Goku, and Yajirobe, surprisingly still present, observes helplessly, realizing there's nothing he can do. As Vegeta intensifies the pressure to Goku's body, Yajirobe is distressed by the agonizing screams emanating from Goku. Krillin and Gohan approach the battlefield, noticing the strange ball of light again and wonders what it could be. When they spot Goku and Vegeta below, Krillin urgently instructs Gohan to get down and find a place to hide. Recognizing that Vegeta has transformed into a great ape, Krillin panics and Yajirobe notices that two have arrived. Vegeta continues his assault on Goku, stating that every bone in his body is broken. Krillin and Gohan land nearby and decide to sneak up on Vegeta from behind. Suddenly, Yajirobe intervenes, cautioning the two that the creature standing in front of them is the Saiyan, Vegeta. Despite being aware of the situation, Krillin exclaims that if they cut off his tail, he'll return to normal. Krillin then formulates his plan. Yajirobe and Gohan will distract Vegeta from the front and Krillin will attempt to sever the tail from behind. Krillin urges everyone to hurry as Goku is about to die, and as he and Gohan advance, Yajirobe, skeptical of their chances against Vegeta's strength,
point holds back. Krillin senses Goku's diminishing energy and believes they may not make it in time as Vegeta continues squeezing him. However, Vegeta stops as he senses someone nearby and demands they show themselves. According to plan, Gohan reveals himself, demanding Vegeta to let his father go. Seizing the opportunity though, Vegeta invites Gohan to witness Kakarot's demise. Behind the Saiyan, Krillin raises his hand to form a destructo disc and at the same time, Vegeta instructs Gohan to pay close attention as he's about to crush Goku until there's nothing left. Krillin releases the destructo disc and as the blade draws closer, Vegeta effortlessly leaps over it, surprising both Krillin and Gohan as the projectile slices through the rock formation, including the one Gohan stands on. Vegeta lands and stunned, Krillin and Gohan watch as the Saiyan boast about knowing another one of them had been on the battlefield all along, as he knew Kakarot's son wouldn't dare come back here alone. The Saiyan exclaims that after Kakarot's been dealt with, they are next and prepares to finish off the unconscious Goku in his hands. Frustrated, Krillin apologizes to Goku for his inability to act, noting that there's nothing they can do against Vegeta's might. As Vegeta finally prepares to crush Goku between his hands, Krillin can't bear to look and Gohan screams for him to stop, but suddenly, Yajirobe intervenes, swiftly severing Vegeta's tail with his sword. Caught off guard, Vegeta states he didn't expect another Earthling to be on the battlefield as he acknowledges the loss of his tail. His transformation then disappears as the Saiyan drops a bloodied Goku to the ground and reverts to his normal state. Krillin expresses joy over Yajirobe's intervention while the latter remains scared, concealed behind a rock. Gohan, still bewildered, is unaware of what transpired and Vegeta, infuriated, vows to kill them all and charges toward Gohan. Krillin tells the boy to run away, but Vegeta lands in front of Gohan immediately, stating that he'll start the killing with him. Vegeta delivers a powerful gut punch to Gohan that sends the young Saiyan reeling. As Vegeta prepares for another assault, mocking Gohan as Saiyan hybrids are supposed to be strong, Krillin rushes in, but Vegeta, anticipating the move, turns around and delivers a devastating kick to Krillin's face, knocking him into a nearby rock formation as Yajirobe watches anxiously. Turning back to Gohan, Vegeta instructs him to rise and make their fight more entertaining. Grasping Gohan by the shirt, Vegeta belittles him, headbutting him forcefully and remarking on the presence of red blood, even in trash. Deciding to be somewhat merciful, Vegeta throws Gohan next to Goku, saying at the very least they should die together. Goku, unable to move and limited on options, implores Gohan to fight on his behalf. At the same time, Vegeta notices that Kakarot's gained consciousness again. Gohan, feeling overwhelmed, believes Vegeta is too strong, and Vegeta, expressing his intent to kill everyone, notes the order he'll do in it. First he'll kill Goku, then Gohan, then Krillin, and lastly, the tail-severing Yajirobe, who grows scared in realizing that Vegeta knows he's there. Encouraging Gohan, Goku insists that even if his son can't win, he can at least stall Vegeta, allowing Krillin an opportunity to finish him off. Krillin slowly rises, and Gohan continues to lack confidence in his own strength. Goku, however, grows irritated, urging his son to remember Piccolo's teachings, assuring him that Piccolo wouldn't have wanted him to just lie down and die. Their conversation is interrupted though, as Vegeta lands a knee on Goku's stomach, prompting coughs of blood from the Saiyan. Goku yells out in pain once more, as Vegeta towers over him, much to Gohan's shock. Vegeta mocks Kakarot for his resilience and continues to torture him, launching a barrage of kicks as Gohan watches. Vegeta continues his assault, and Gohan, angered, rises to his feet, demanding Vegeta to stop. Turning around, Vegeta watches as Gohan challenges him to fight him instead, and the Saiyan arrogantly questions Gohan's ability to defeat him. Gohan retaliates with an energy blast, but Vegeta effortlessly evades it. Gohan then executes a jump kick, sending Vegeta flying. Gohan pursues him, but Vegeta counterattacks with a kick to Gohan's face. Meanwhile, Goku calls out to Krillin to come closer, and Krillin weakly does so as Vegeta and Gohan continue to exchange blows. Krillin wonders why Goku didn't tell Gohan to run away, but rather than answering, Goku expresses his desire to transfer the spirit bomb he collected from Earth to Krillin. Gohan and Vegeta continue their intense battle, while Krillin seeks clarification from Goku. Goku reveals the existence of the spirit bomb, a gradually accumulating force of ki from the Earth. Goku asserts that he lost half of its power during his battle with Vegeta earlier, but believes it still possesses enough power to defeat the Saiyan. Urging Krillin to hold his hand, Goku, despite broken bones, instructs Krillin to concentrate. Krillin, bewildered, complies as Goku's hand begins to glow, transferring the energy to Krillin's hand. Vegeta smashes Gohan down, sending
sending him to the ground as Krillin grapples with the newfound power. Goku tells Krillin not to let it overwhelm him and states that he's their only hope as Gohan is unable to control this type of energy. Successfully, Krillin forms a ball of energy, much to Goku's relief. At the same time, as Gohan stands injured, Vegeta rushes in, swiftly attacking the boy with an elbow, prompting Goku to request Krillin to use the spirit bomb against Vegeta and make sure he doesn't miss. Gohan, recovering, marvels at Vegeta's strength while Krillin hops atop a taller rock formation, searching for an opening to launch the attack. Charging in once more, Vegeta commends Gohan's efforts but states that he's hit his limit. Gohan leaps into the air to gain some distance, but Vegeta launches a blast that the boy barely manages to dodge. Gohan retaliates with his own blast, but Vegeta effortlessly evades, much to Gohan's shock. Krillin, observing the battle from above, struggles to launch the spirit bomb due to Vegeta's swift movements. However, a telepathic message from King Kai advises Krillin to sense the evil energy in Vegeta in order to aim the attack accordingly. Krillin, confused on who's speaking, is greeted by King Kai, who tells him the fate of the Earth rests in his hands. As Vegeta approaches Gohan, once again stating his status as a super elite warrior, Krillin finally begins to understand the nature of the spirit bomb as he readies the attack. At the same time, Vegeta unleashes a barrage of blasts toward Gohan, who narrowly evades the explosions. Krillin attempts to focus in feeling out Vegeta's evil energy, and as Gohan is smashed into a nearby rock formation, Goku thinks to himself for Krillin to hurry up. Meanwhile, Yajirobe notices Krillin holding the spirit bomb. The explosions toward Gohan stop, and the boy lies on the ground, as Vegeta rushes in once more, preparing for the final blow. At the same time, Krillin finally senses Vegeta's energy, but is met with yelling from Yajirobe, telling him to hurry up, which catches Vegeta's attention. Noting how stupid Yajirobe is, Krillin launches the spirit bomb at Vegeta, but the Saiyan manages to leap over it at the last minute. As panic ensues amongst the onlookers, King Kai notes that it's all over, as the attack hurdles toward Gohan. Goku, however, telepathically instructs Gohan to deflect the attack, noting that as long as he doesn't have any evil energy in him, it will bounce away. Gohan then extends his hands, redirecting the spirit bomb as it hurdles back toward Vegeta. The spirit bomb lands a direct hit, and the ensuing explosion engulfs Vegeta, propelling him high into the air. With Vegeta seemingly defeated, a collective sense of relief and celebration washes over everyone. Krillin and Gohan approach Goku, engaging in conversation, only to be interrupted by Vegeta's sudden descent from the sky. Landing not far from the group, Vegeta's remarkably intact appearance surprises Gohan, but Krillin notes it's just his body. Approaching Vegeta, Krillin notes that he was really quite a monster, but contemplates the idea of giving him a proper grave. Vegeta, however, unexpectedly awakens, asserting that the grave will be for them. This shocks Krillin, Gohan, Yajirobe, and even Goku. Rising to his feet, Vegeta acknowledges the group have certainly did a number on him, and states that for a moment, even he thought he was done for. As King Kai sits in shock on his planet, Vegeta threatens to exact revenge as he backhands Krillin, sending him flying. As Krillin attempts to compose himself, Vegeta declares his intent to obliterate the entire planet. Vegeta advances, expressing his disdain for the perceived indignity the group have inflicted on his pride. Abruptly, the Saiyan declares they drop dead already as he halts and releases a massive shockwave, triggering a colossal explosion that sends everyone flying. As the dust from the explosion begins to settle, Vegeta stands atop a giant crater resulting from his attack. As the Saiyan looks around to see if the work is done, he notices Krillin, Goku, and Gohan still alive, stating his attack was pathetic as they're still clinging to life. Vegeta, nearing unconsciousness but resolute, decides to finish up on Earth so he can get some rest. To his surprise though, upon approaching Gohan, he discovers the unexpected return of the young Saiyan's tail. Krillin, at the same time, notes that Goku's tail used to grow back in his youth as well. Spotting his still active artificial moon in the sky, Vegeta prepares to sever Gohan's tail. However, an unforeseen development occurs behind him. Yajirobe charges at Vegeta, screaming aloud, and slashes his sword down the Saiyan's back, penetrating his armor. Yajirobe lands and Vegeta topples as the human rises to his feet in laughter, congratulating himself for accomplishing such a feat and exclaiming that Vegeta, a Saiyan, was done in by Yajirobe. However, to Yajirobe's shock, Vegeta slowly rises once more. Yajirobe attempts to slice Vegeta again, but the Saiyan dodges, staring menacingly at the Earthling before him. Yajirobe then drops his sword and attempts to reconcile, claiming it was just a joke and offers for he and Vegeta to be friends. In response, 
hits. Vegeta kicks Yajirobe away, refusing to give him any time to recover as he delivers a devastating punch to his face that propels him into a cluster of rocks. Amidst the chaos, Goku urgently directs Gohan's attention to the luminous sphere in the sky, and the young Saiyan does so, having fallen off the rock he was lying on. Vegeta races to intervene, aiming to finish Gohan off, yet it proves futile as Gohan has initiated his transformation. As Gohan undergoes his change, Vegeta attempts to thwart the process, realizing the impending danger. Krillin observes Goku's daring gamble to rely on the Great Ape and expresses concern. Vegeta recalls that in his rush, he forgot that targeting the tail would stop the transformation process. He then attempts to rip Gohan's tail off of him, but is interrupted when the Great Ape transformation nears completion and delivers a powerful smash to Vegeta's head. As Gohan rises, his transformation now complete, he lets out a mighty roar, prompting panic from Vegeta as Krillin reflects on Goku's great ape from the past and wonders if Gohan will completely lose control. In the midst of Gohan demolishing nearby rock formations, Krillin is caught under some of the rubble, fearing he's gotten his answer. Gohan then lifts a giant boulder, continuing his rampage, but Krillin shouts, urging Gohan to retaliate against the Saiyan. Gohan then jolts, hearing Krillin's words, and focuses his attention on Vegeta, launching the boulder down at him as Krillin notes a bit of Gohan is still inside the Great Ape. Frustrated, Vegeta, noting that he won't last much longer, resolves to sever Gohan's tail since the artificial moon he created won't go out for at least another hour. Gohan ascends into the air, intent on attacking Vegeta, while Vegeta readies an attack similar to Krillin's Destructo Disc. As Gohan descends, Vegeta propels a disc toward him, successfully slicing off Gohan's tail. Gohan, reverting to his normal state, falls toward Vegeta, who suddenly realizes he's about to be crushed under the weight of the Great Ape. Gohan then collapses onto Vegeta, and both warriors crash to the ground. While Gohan lies unconscious, Vegeta, regaining consciousness, struggles to retrieve a remote control from his chest armor. Utilizing the remote, Vegeta calls for his ship, prompting Krillin's disbelief in his resilience. Simultaneously, in the remnants of East City, scientists uncover one of the two space pods that the Saiyans arrived in. Unexpectedly, the pod launches into the sky and takes off, leaving Vegeta in disbelief that he's being forced to run away. Meanwhile, Bulma navigates an aircraft with Master Roshi, Chi Chi, and Korin aboard. Korin provides guidance, pinpointing Goku and the others are below the light emanating by Vegeta's artificial moon. Concerned about Gohan's fate, Chi Chi anxiously interrogates Korin, who speculates that Gohan is probably alive. Master Roshi expresses unease about the faintness of the five key sensed from earlier, including the Saiyan, who Korin notes is on the brink of death. On the battlefield, Vegeta's space pod descends, landing a short distance from the Saiyan. Despite his weakened state, Vegeta crawls toward the ship. Nearby, Krillin recognizes the spaceship and says that he can't let Vegeta get away, as the Saiyan talks aloud, ashamed that he's being forced to retreat. Krillin notices and retrieves Yajirobe's sword, stealthily approaching Vegeta, who weakly draws closer to his ship. At the same time, King Kai, pleased with the unfolding events, notes that Krillin and the others did well against the Saiyan, but cryptically hints at a deeper evil within the universe. As Vegeta reaches his ship, Krillin catches up, ready to strike. Vegeta notices Krillin and panics as the Earthling declares he'll be getting revenge for his fallen allies as he lifts Yajirobe's sword above his head and screams for Vegeta to die. However, Goku, communicating directly to Krillin telepathically, intervenes and tells him to wait. Krillin realizes the voice is coming from Goku and batter, the Saiyan pleased with Krillin to spare Vegeta. Krillin questions the unexpected request, stating that Vegeta was the one responsible for killing their friends and needs to answer for that. He goes on to say that if they don't take care of this problem now, Vegeta will recover and attempt to destroy the Earth again, and Goku concurs. Krillin says that if Goku's expecting Vegeta to have a change of heart like Piccolo, he's wasting his time and suggests they kill him now, but Goku, resolute, tells his friend that killing Vegeta would be nothing more than a waste. Goku goes on to say that even after finishing his training with King Kai, Vegeta surpassed his strength in every way imaginable. He notes that he hadn't felt excitement like this since he battled Piccolo a few years back, and deduces that it may be his Saiyan blood driving him to test his limits. As Vegeta continues to inch his way into his pod, Goku tells Krillin he wants to prove himself against the Saiyan, to know that he can defeat him using his own power, and pleads with Krillin one last time to let him go. Despite Krillin's reservations, challenging as it is to let someone like Vegeta escape, Krillin drops Yajirobe's sword, convinced
chance to let Vegeta go. Krillin tells Goku he's earned the right to have things go his way, but makes him promise that the next time Vegeta returns to Earth, Goku will be much stronger, and he agrees. Vegeta, now inside his ship, insults Krillin as trash and warns him to be prepared for their next encounter, as he'll slaughter them all and blast off into space. Soon after, Krillin retrieves the unconscious Gohan, and Yajirobe injured criticizes Krillin for not finishing off Vegeta. Goku apologizes to Krillin, who brushes it off, suggesting he may know a way to bring their friends back to life, and at the same time, Bulma and her companions arrive in their plane, preparing to land after the battle's end. The Saiyan Saga is an amazing and well-paced saga in Dragon Ball Z, as the Z Fighters were exposed to a formidable race of warriors for the first time in their lives, who most of them couldn't handle the first time around. This is one of the few sagas in the entirety of Dragon Ball where the stakes were incredibly high as it had you on the edge of your seat as you wonder what would happen next. The introduction of not three, but four Saiyans in this arc led to exciting questions about Goku's origin and the defeat of Vegeta to inquiries about other threats inhabiting the universe. But what did you think about this arc? Did you enjoy it? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.